Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? We've got balloons. I've got a badge. We're having cake later as well. I've turned into Silla. Surprise, surprise. I've been here two years. I can't, be I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's been a wonderful two years. Absolutely smashing. They promised me there are no blooper reels. Fingers crossed. Um, I don't want to relive any of those moments. But it is my two year anniversary here at Sewing Street and we've got an absolutely stonking good morning. We've got a fabulous guest, but you know what? Today is no different to any other day in the sense that we're gonna start with an early bird. Now actually we're gonna start with two early birds and I love these, both of them. I'm gonna, well, let me tell you why. So the early birds are Tim Holtz backing fabrics, okay? And we're gonna start with this one, okay? Which is the world map. And I just love this. Full price should be 14.99 per half meter. Now let me tell you why it is our early bird today because look, here is the quilt of the day. Um, it's my brand new quilt, New Mexico which is a celebration of solids and gorgeous desert colours. But look, I couldn't resist using a gorgeous bit of Tim Holtz on the back. Um, because, you know, it's all about kind of colours of the world and I, I wanted to celebrate that and what a great way of backing it. So this is the Tim Holtz world map on the back. Um, it's not 14 99 it's our early bird. Here we go. Let's make... A fab, let's make a four pound saving per half meter. It's 10.99, that's fab. 10.99 a half meter. Um, now you're gonna need, for this quilt, you'd need uh, two, two meters. Two meters, yeah. So you would need four units, which is an absolutely fantastic price for backing a quilt. And you will get a big piece of backing there. Um, now, before we go anywhere else, I also need to tell you something super important, and that is to celebrate my second anniversary here on Sewing Street. We've got free PMP all day. Woohoo! Now, you need to use a special code. I do love this. It's Stuart PP23. Postage and packing. Stuart PP23. Okay, so when you check out, make sure you put Stuart PP23 in the code box. You'll get free postage and packing and you'll get that all day. So make sure you get your free PMP. Use it for your early bird. One of two actually. Uh, this is Tim Holtz. This is uh, Eclectic Elements Expedition and it is 274 centimetres wide. So that's 108 inches wide. Now then, let's grab the second early bird, which is also a Timmy Holtz. A Timmy Holtz, a backing fabric. Um, another of my absolute favourites, this is Dictionary. Um, I've been using this in my new book actually. This is the Tim Holtz Dictionary fabric, which just looks fab on everything. Uh, 10 99 per half metre. You'll need two metres of this, or four units, to back your New Mexico quilt. All right, some lovely good mornings. Margaret says, great show. We've only just started, my darling, but fingers crossed. Uh, Tracy says, morning, Stuart. Happy anniversary. Uh, Beverly says, looks like the website and the app are not working. Oh, Beverly, that's brought me down a little bit. We'll sort it. Have a look. See what we can do. Um, might need to refresh. Hilary says, morning, Stu. Looking good for two. <laughs> Thank you. Tracy says, good morning all. Congratulations, Stuart. That two years has gone quickly. It really has. Uh, Carol says, congratulations, Stuart. It's been great having you. Long may it continue. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, everything's fine on the website. We just had a look. Give it a refresh. Lynn says, morning, Stuart. Happy anniversary. Laurie says, hi, Stuart. Happy two years. It's been a great two years. You brighten my day and bring so many skills to us. Enjoy your day, lots of hugs. Thank you, Laurie, that's absolutely gorgeous. We'll have a little look at the website, but from what we can see, it looks fine to us. 
but a couple of people say it's not working and other people saying it is. So if you're having any trouble, refresh your screen. Um, fingers crossed it's because lots of you are there. Ah, oh, well, anyway, look, welcome to the show. I've got a fabulous morning ahead. Um, let's see the menu and let's see what's coming up. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that little bear. Uh, 8 a.m. Stuart Hillard's New Mexico quilt. I've been planning this for ages um, and I hope you like it. I hope you love it. Um, at nine o'clock, quilt as you go, rainbow bite-sized block with Wendy Orlando. Wendy's going to be showing us how to do quilt as you go. And she has specially designed a brand new quilt block, which is super cute to showcase one of my rainbow panels. Um, it really is really, really lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. Love this. It's a gorgeous sort of baby quilt that she's done there. Isn't that fabulous? Okay, then at 10 o'clock, we've got beautiful fabric panels. We've got national gallery panels. Uh, we've got some beautiful art panels. And we've also got some Japanese panels, which are stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, at 11 o'clock, we've got the foldable bag with Wendy Orlando, which bless her, she's used my Blue Skies and Nutmeg. If you missed out on my brand new fabric range, Blue Skies and Nutmeg, we have got all the pre-cuts in that hour, so stay tuned. And then at 12 o'clock, Stuart Hillard Designs. We've got books, we've got fabrics, we've got patterns, we've got kits, we've got panels. Uh, and we've got sock yarn as well. So we've got my Walking in Nature sock yarns at 12 o'clock too. Um, a lot of love for the badge. Thank you very much. Uh, Sue says, quilt ordered. Lots of love on your anniversary. Jane says, hi Stuart. No website, not showing you new quilt details. I have my finger poised to buy. Just please refresh. Uh, Pauline says, morning gorgeous. Happy anniversary. I'm looking forward to some cake later. See you soon. Rebecca says, Rebecca Harrison says, loving the badge. Two years of fun and laughter. Annette says, watching you from County Donegal, Stuart. As always, you bring fun and happiness. Congratulations on your second anniversary. Thank you. Um, now, let's go to our website. Let's have a look. www.sewingstreet.com. There we are. A free pin badge with all orders while stock lasts stocks last click on watch live there i am there's the early bird click on coming up there's the new mexico quilt instructions 9.99 and then we've got some backing fabrics uh it's got into a bit of a weird order there's the kit stuart hillard's new mexico quilt kit instructions all the fabric did you see that price Sixty-four ninety-nine for everything. All you that's your that's your binding. That's all of your fabric for the front and your pattern for the New Mexico quilt for sixty-four ninety-nine. You just need a backing fabric, and I would suggest either the Tim Holtz would look awesome, and it's our early bird, or you could use a solid, and I've got a solid navy as well, which would look really good. Uh, Tim Holtz, a world map, that expedition, that's pretty much sold out. Well done if you've got yours. Don't forget, we've still got Dictionary, which is my second best favourite. Um, look at these lovely panels. Look at the Norin uh, Japanese panels. There's a Christmas tree. There's, there's all sorts. We've got National Gallery panels as well. Van Gogh. We've got some Monet as well. Absolutely gorgeous. The Neo Geo, love that. Enchanted Dreamscapes, that's beautiful. The Elephant and the Giraffe. Where's the bear? Where is the bear? We better have a bear. There's a fox, so that's near enough. Fox there. <laughs> Fab, we've got loads today. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Lots of rainbow brights, of course. There's another of those Japanese panels. They are stunning. They are stunning. Um, and also, uh, look, we've got lots of lovely bright rainbow notions, blue skies and nutmegs. So we've got the Crafty Co. Uh, fa foldable bag instructions. We've got kits as well. Those are a great price. We've also got all of the pre-cuts, half meter bundles, one meter bundles. We've got the strip rolls and the charm packs in blue skies and nutmegs. So if you missed out, you haven't. You can still get them. 
let's get started, shall we? Let's get started. Ah. Oh. Susie Duncan says, happy second anniversary, loving the shirt. Oh, sock yarn, need to a pair knitting before I go camping. <laughs> I think that's possible. Right, let's get started. So let's start off, instructions on their own. Now, this is the quilt, all right? These are the instructions, 9 99 They are brand new for my brand new pack, New Mexico. Now, in the instructions, you get full instructions for making the quilt and the bonus cushion okay and it's actually really really easy a really easy pattern to extend and increase the number of blocks if you want to it is not difficult at all so you get your full tutorial how to do your cutting how to do your your layouts as well all your instructions for how you're going to piece and lay out the quilt. You also get a full layout diagram in colour and you get a colouring sheet as well so that if you want to recolour the whole thing and start from scratch with your own palette, you absolutely can. Then you've also got some foundation paper patterns. This is the easiest foundation paper piecing you'll ever do. Well, there's some lovely inspiring photographs at the end and uh, a little bit of chat there at the back about how I came up with the pattern. So full instructions. Now the quilt itself is 57 inches square and let me sort of talk you through it. So what you've got here uh, is 13 blocks that you're going to piece. We've got a center one, this is one colorway. We've got four more in a different colorway here. You've got, now what I call the 12, three o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock positions. So that's the third colorway. And the fourth colorway is out in the four corners. So this is all explained in the pattern, how many of each, how many units to make as well. And then you've got that gorgeous uh, paper pieced border. So the majority of the quilt is regular piecing. It's not paper pieces, it's just regular piecing. Um, but those border triangles, those setting triangles are foundation paper piece. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in this morning's hour. Okay. So those are the instructions on their own. Now, if you want to make this exact quilt, I have a fabric bundle, which I'm going to show you next. All right. Thank you. Brilliant. Look at that. That was slick. <laughs> so this is your full kit for $64.99. So you get your instructions. Very, very important. Then you get two and a half meters of cream solid. So this is the solid that I've used for the background. And then you get all of your piecing fabrics for all those beautiful motifs. And this is a selection of absolutely beautiful solids. You've got orange, you've got paprika, terracotta, you've got sapphire, peacock, gold, you've got uh, brunette, you've got brunette, you've got, uh, that's the sapphire, and you've got, I think it's aqua, isn't it? And then I've used navy for the binding. Absolutely beautiful selection, a beautiful palette. There is a bit of a story about the uh, palette, uh, and I and I uh, and I'm going to share with you the the story behind the palette. Um, but for that, I will need producer Ben to come out here. So <laughs> this is producer Ben. He's just coming through. So so what I did was a, it was a couple of months ago. I said to our producer Ben, I want to do this special quilt for my anniversary show, and. Uh, it's a bear. I wanted a bear. Just for you. Hey, and I a, wanted and cake a, as a well. A cake with a look two on this. it. Oh, I say, look at that. All right, enough about the quilt. Let's just get this cake, yeah, then, shall we? Yeah, it's the important thing. <laughs> Let's do that. Hello. No, this is Ben. This is Ben. And um, I said to Ben, um, I want to do, do a really special quilt 
um, but Ben does amazing home renovations and interiors and stuff and he's really great with colour and you know I've said before I love it when he puts together a colour palette for the shows mm -hmm. so I said didn't I can you do me a colour palette yes so it was so you, you pitched it to me yeah. and you said you like the, the rusts and the blues because um, I think I painted my bathroom yeah. And it was like a blue and coral yeah. sort of colourway. Yeah. So I, I went home and put together a basic palette of, I think it was four or five colours. Yeah, yeah. Sent it across to you and you said, more. And I said more because mm -hmm. I'm greedy and that's what I'm like. Yeah, it was kind of, it was sort of these colours, wasn't it, here? It was yeah. kind of teals, oranges mm -hmm. and some blue, which was, you know, the perfect starting point for me. I wanted this kind of deserty mixture of colours. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I hadn't designed the quilt at all. I, I hadn't really thought about what I was going to do with the colours. Mm -hmm. So I said more. So we, we did more and we put more blues in, more of the browns and that's when the kind of the gold came into play mm -hmm. um, and then applied that colour palette to the fabrics that we have mm. and we put a mood board together, I sent it across to you. It did. And it all sounds very formal doesn't it when you it put does. it like that? It does, mood boards. Mood boards, Sent pitching. Mm, we touched base a few times. <laughs> we and did, it was all very high powered. Corporate jargon, you know how it works here. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. But you know, I just loved the way Ben put the, the colours together. And then of course I wanted that cream just to make all the colours sing and mm. give them space. But of course, once I'd got the palette, it instantly made me think of oh, New Mexico, Santa Fe, those kind of hot desert colours and brilliant blue skies. Mm. And Well, it was really nice for, for me as well, because myself and Hannah will put together colour bundles with the idea being, oh, I wonder what people could make with this. People yeah. could make X with yeah. this, people could make YZ with this. Yeah. But to actually put together a palette and then see this. Yeah, we get to see it this time. Well, yeah, because I'm always talking about, you know, what you might be able to do with a with a bundle of fabrics, you know. So this was me sort of putting, putting myself to the test. Um, and yeah, I instantly thought of this kind of, I don't know, New Mexico or a Navajo kind of look. And um, yeah, so I'm really, yeah, I'm happy with it. I hope you are too. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Loved it. And you even got a hello, Ben, from Claire. Are you, Claire? <laughs> that's my mum's name. <laughs> oh, well, that's who it'll be then. Uh, morning uh, to Steph. She says, morning, Stuart. What a clever man you are. I hope the goats are okay. I've just seen a funny video with goats, men and women. Mud and women. Hilarious. Oh, I shall look it up. <laughs> right. So if you want to get your kids, Kit. It's $64.99. You get all of your fabrics, all of your piecing fabrics. You also get all of your um, cream fabric. You get two and a half meters of that. You get 10 half meters of the colors, including your binding. So seven and a half meters of fabric in total, plus your instructions for $64.99. Now, I am going to pop the cake to one side because I think it would be, be a good idea to show you a little bit. Yeah? Should we, let's do a bit of demo. Let's do a little bit of demo. Have we had lots of messages? Ah. Oh. Let me pop this to one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of foundation paper piecing. Now, did we manage to find that uh, card, that picture? Like a postcard, John. No, have a look. Have a look. Catherine says, "Good morning to everyone. Happy second. Oh, missed it. <laughs> Come back. Come back. Happy second anniversary, Stuart. Love to see you on Sewing Street. Ah, oh, thank you, Catherine. I just need a postcard or something like that. Just a bit of card. Be lovely. Thank you. Any more messages?" Morning, Stuart. Happy anniversary. The website wasn't working before I ate in, but it is now. I've used your code and got your New Mexico quilt fab. Oh, thank you, Christine. Glad the website's working now as well. Fab. Another message. Thank you. 
Uh, happy anniversary, Stuart. The new quilt looks vibrant and defo feeling the New Mexico vibe. And is the menu bear based on you from Susan in Hampshire? I certainly hope so, Susan. <laughs> Another one. Thank you. Uh, morning, Stuart. Happy second birthday with Sewing Street. Loving the quilt. Love, Margaret. Thank you. That's really kind, Margaret. Glad you like it. Oh, another one. Thank you. Uh, morning. Great quilt. Got my pattern. Is it easy to make bigger? And have you a fabric bundle for the cushion? Will Ben come and design my lounge from Marjorie in Suffolk? Um, I, you've asked the question. I'm sure I'll consider it. Um, is the quilt easy to make bigger? Yes, absolutely. Because you don't have to figure anything uh, apart from numbers. So if you wanted to add an extra row and make a really good like single bed quilt, that would be easy. You could put two more blocks um, and then put your, you know, just extra setting triangles. That would be easy to do. Um, if you wanted to make it wider, again, just add more blocks, more setting triangles. You don't have to refigure borders or anything like that. Um, and you get all the fabric for the cushion in the pack. There's enough fabric there to make the quilt and the cushion. Yeah, yeah. You might just need a bit of something extra to do the backing. Well, you probably piece it. It needs to be bigger than that, Michael. Just the whole piece of uh, card will be great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Now, I need to let you know, half the stock of the quilt kit has sold out. Well done if you've managed to get yours. The rest of it's in baskets. Do you want to see how easy it is to make? OK, let's do that. Let's do that. Let me grab a couple of bits and pieces. Yeah, I just need a few bits and bobs. Right, so first things first, you'll need to make some copies of your foundations. And you've got setting triangles, which are the larger ones. And you've got corner triangles. Now, the setting triangles won't fit on one page. So what you do is you've got both pieces on one page and there's a join line. So just cut them out and then this orange line, put the two together to make the big triangle and then just use something like some masking tape or scotch tape just to join those two pieces together. And that's your big setting triangle. But I'm going to show you how to do the corner triangle uh, with foundation paper piecing. And it's so easy. There's also, if you want to laugh, there's a video that I made about 12 years ago. I think it was my first ever video that I ever made on YouTube called, you know, on how to do foundation paper piecing. I'll warn you, it's a bit boring. <laughs> it is a bit boring, but it's worth watching because you will learn how to paper piece. But I'm going to show you how now as well. Uh, you do need a special code for free PMP, by the way. It's Stuart PP23. There it is. <laughs> Stuart PP23. Right, now then, I'm going to grab a little bit of fabric. Now, obviously, you're going to be a little bit more circumspect with your fabrics. I'm just whacking bits off here. Um, and I advise that you pre cut your fabrics. Um, I'm going to do, so you can mix and match a little bit if you want to. Let's have the brown, the chocolate brown and the two blues for this setting triangle. I mean, look at the scraps that you've got or the pieces that you've got when you um, have made your blocks. And, and you can change the setting triangles a little bit. <laughs> there I am. There's the video. I'm so skinny. <laughs> That's why they picked me for the sewing bee. <laughs> it's my classic good looks. Um, yeah, that was before I did sewing bee. It was probably about six months that, I, that, that we videoed that. I was writing for magazines. I'd started writing for magazines. Um, and I'd done jubilee jacks which was um which is actually in make 100 quilts the pattern is in make 100 quilts and um i thought a video might be helpful so i made a youtube video and i hadn't got a clue what i was doing or how to do it but anyway i think it worked so there we go right so i've got some fabrics cut out ready um and 
I'll give them a quick press. Now for your wider strips, which are the colours, I recommend that you pre-cut strips that are two and a quarter inches wide. Now that's quite generous. Um, it's going to give you a bit of wiggle room. You know, don't make life hard for yourself when you're doing when you're doing um, foundation piecing. It's just not worth making your life hard. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a few strips first of all. Now my thin strips, one and a quarter inches wide is plenty. So I'll get a few strips pre-cut. That'll probably do it actually and a little bit of these and I want two and a quarter inch wide strips and they can just be quite rough right then there we go right so the equipment that you'll need for foundation paper piecing is your rotary cutter ruler and mat you need a bit of cardboard postcards fine just a bit of plain card and you need your fabrics okay so here's our foundation and you'll see it's numbered one two three four five six seven eight nine and we're going to piece in numerical order the business side is on the top where you've got the printing the fabric is all going to go on the back so i want the nave no the brown the chocolate brown in the center, number one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna lay my piece of fabric down. Now I'm just gonna hold this up to the, whoops, hold it up to the light. And I'm just checking that that piece of fabric completely covers patch number one and also extends into all of the seam allowances around it. Now the next thing, this is so important and it's so helpful to do. Grab your piece of card Put it on the seam allowance between one and two. So this line here, okay. Flip your paper back against the cardboard and crease it, okay. And then what you're going to do, that exposes the seam allowance. And at the moment, I've got more than a quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim that back to one quarter of an inch, okay. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side now. I should probably have pinned that in place, but no matter. So peel that back. You can use an add a, add a quarter ruler to do this if you want to, but as I'm showing you, you don't have to. You can use your regular ruler and your piece of card you would use with an add a quarter ruler anyway you're still going to use that right so the next thing is i need my cream fabric and i'm going to cut that in half okay so what i'm going to do now is lay my cream on top and I'm gonna to go to my machine, shorter stitch length than normal, 1.5 is fine, straight stitch, center needle position, and I'm sewing straight down on the line. Flip that fabric back, finger press it, do exactly the same on the other side. So what I wanna show you is that this is an easy pattern to foundation paper piece because it's literally straight strips from the center outwards. So it really couldn't be much easier. So I've creased those. So I've got my two pieces of fabric joined on and pressed outwards. What I'm gonna do now is flip it back to the printed side, to the business side. Now I'm going to put my cardboard between, I've done one, two, and three, so now it's between two and four on the line. Fold the paper back. There's my extra fabric. Trim that back to a quarter of an inch. Get rid of that little strip. Once you've made one or two of these, you might refine your cutting instructions. 
So I've said one and a quarter and two and a quarter inch wide strips, but you might think, well, you know what? I think I could probably get away with one inch and that would be fine. That would be fine. But I mean, it's up to you. Okay, so I've trimmed that back. So now I'm gonna get my next piece of fabric and I'm gonna use this really bright blue here. Um, I'm just gonna have a look and see, can I get away? No, I'm gonna need two pieces. Anyway, right sides together like that, fabric to fabric, flip it over and sew. Now when you're sewing, if you've got the outer seam allowance within that seam, you wanna sew right through that. So if I show you, here's the line I've just sewn right here. And I've sewn right from outside the outer seam allowance all the way along and I've gone right through the seam allowance and out the other side. Okay, so don't just stop here and here. Keep your seam going all the way through. Okay, flip that back and finger press it. Okay. Now then, have I got my, there we go. There's my other fabrics. I'm just gonna trim that down. There we go. Don't forget with your pattern, um, you get instructions for the quilt and the cushion. And I suggest you make the cushion first. Because really, it's always a good idea to make one block in its entirety, first of all. Learn the technique, bit of a practice. Um, and once you've done that, then start working on the main quilt. So I've added those two strips flip it over and then we're almost done it this yeah I know it doesn't take long it's quick and easy this is quick and easy I know a lot of people have a real sort of bad relationship or a fractious relationship with foundation paper piecing you don't need to you don't need to have a fractious relationship and it's such a great technique once you've got the hang of it it's such a great technique and it opens up so many possibilities. I'd never piece this unit with regular piecing, never in a million years. Now this piece of fabric, I only need heart. I, I can get away with that. In fact, I'm cream next. So there we go, cream on there, right sides together. And I tell you as well, doing foundation piecing with solids negates that problem that we sometimes have where we get the fabric the wrong way up because solids are the same on both sides. So I've pieced that side. I'm gonna piece that side now. You see, just fabric right side to right side and then we always sew on the printed side. I mean, once you've got it, You'll absolutely soar. There we go. Now for the quilt, you're gonna make four of these corner units. And actually for the cushion, you're gonna make four of these units. So this is a really good one to practice on if you've never done foundation piecing before. So there we go, flip it out. Trim it down to a quarter of an inch. And you just get into this habit of stitching and flipping, but because this design's completely symmetrical and you add to either side as you go, it's a great one to do sort of two for one. So you can sew both sides, trim both sides, and it speeds up the process hugely. All right, last bit then. I've got my last little bit of fabric. It's my bright blue that I'm gonna sew on either end. So again, right from outside the seam allowance and flip, right sides together, sew on the business side. <laughs> there we go. And that is the unit all foundation pieced. Now at the moment it looks like nothing on earth. <laughs> 
What's that all about, eh? Right, so at this point, grab your iron. Now, just be a bit gentle when you're ironing. You want to press rather than iron. So pop the iron down. Jane says, woohoo, got the bundle. Can't wait to get it. But we'll have to wait till November because she lives abroad. Um, Margaret says, morning to all. Happy anniversary to you, Stuart Hillard. You're demoing, so it's going to be a fabulous show for all of us watching. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, Bex says, morning, Stuart. Happy second anniversary. Marion says, love the quilt. Thank you, darling. That's really kind. Right, so I've given that a little press. So the only time I think you really need to press a foundation is, is once you've pieced the whole thing. Right, so now what we're going to do is flip it over and I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim it. So we're going to trim. Now, there's a dotted line all the way around the outside, which technically is your trim line. Okay, I say technically because actually it's always worth measuring from the bold solid line, which is the edge of your block, a quarter of an inch out from there. I mean, my foundations are printed really accurately, but it's still worth measuring out. Trim that off, okay, and then turn your board if you've got a rotating cutting mat and you remember to unlock it. Great. <laughs> Trim that off. And trim that off. Now, one thing I should mention, by the way, is that we've got free postage and packing all day. The code is Stuart PP23, and you need to put that in to um, at checkout, all right? But that isn't just my products or things that are on the show. It is literally everything that's on the website. So anything you want to buy from Sewing Street today. We don't have overlockers on any of the shows today, but if you want to buy an overlocker today and get yourself free PMP, do it. Use code Stuart PP23 as you check out and you'll get free PMP. Right, and here we go. I'll flip it over and there is our perfect foundation pieced unit. There you go, that's it. <laughs> that is it. That is it, that's as hard as it gets. Stitch, flip, stitch, flip, stitch, flip, trim the lot. You know, I've told you before, I don't do hard. I don't do hard. I only do easy, life's hard enough, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. So, Let's do a little recap. On screen at the moment is the kit. So in your kit, you get the brand new instructions for my New Mexico quilt. It's 57 inches square. Got less than 50 of those kits left. Way more than 50 in baskets. So 57 inch square quilt. Uh, it's made up of 13 blocks. There's sashing and cornerstones in between those blocks. Okay. Um, and then you've got setting triangles around the outside that bring everything together. You've also got a bonus pillow or cushion pattern. And this features one block with sashing strips sewn around the outside and the corner units that you've just seen me making. Now, just a little point about when you add your sashing strips. You'll notice that your sashing strips, if, this, if there were cornerstones on this, your sashing strips would go up to about here and there'd be a, a cornerstone here. So that you actually, what happens is when you sew them on, you end up trimming the triangles off. Easiest way is if I show you a picture in the, in the pattern. So let me just find it because it's slightly different to something you might have done before. Right. Oh, just ordered the kit to remind me of meeting the Navajo Indians in Monument Valley, America. Looks great, Stuart. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, another message, morning, Stuart. Happy anniversary. The New Mexico quilt is lovely. So many gorgeous colors. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, hi, Stuart. Happy second anniversary. Hope you're here for a very long time. Love to see you. Have a great day from Dean Suffolk. Thank you. Really appreciate that. One more. Oh, thank you. So many messages. Happy second birthday. You're a positive influence to the show. Love, good influence. Thank you. Love the quilt and the tech you show us. Love Sandy in Anglesey. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. Now, let me show you. So it's just this picture right here. Okay. So when you put your quilt together, do you see here the sashing strips actually extend beyond the block there's some little triangles almost like dog ears sticking out so don't think you've done something wrong because those ends don't match up They're, all the instructions on how to do it are in the pattern but i just want to point that out now the best thing you can do when you come to quilt your quilt or your cushion leave those triangles on layer up your quilt, quilt it, and then when it's all quilted, then you can trim around the outside edge and trim those little bits off. You don't need to trim them off right at the start. All right? Now, quilting the quilt, quilting your cushion, I long arm quilted both pieces. Um, the quilt that's hanging behind me, I used a pattern called Cool Beans, um, which is one of my favorites. And it's kind of interlocking, rounded squares and rectangles, really. Um, it's this path, whereabouts are we? Wait, wait, yeah, it's this path that kind of goes like around and a square and around and a square and around and a square. And you can, you can quilt that, you know, on your domestic machine. Just practice doodling it first. The cushion, I did a Baptist fan, which is a very, very traditional quilting pattern, but it also looks really modern. But to be honest with you, straight lines, straight line quilting would look awesome. Diagonal straight lines or straight across, that would look really cool. A big cross hatch over the whole surface of the quilt would look fabulous. You don't need to do anything fancy. And you definitely, definitely don't need to quilt in the ditch around every triangle. <laughs> Trust me, you really, really don't. You get loads of impact. Uh, it stands alone, it, you know. Don't give yourself the headache of trying to quilt around all these triangles. I mean, if you really want to, you could, but I don't think it will add to the impact of the quilt. Let the fabric sing, let your piecing sing, um, and it'll be absolutely fine. Now, would you like another demo? Yes, please. Fine. 20 kits left. Oh, 90 in baskets. Now, pattern-wise, you can get the pattern on its own if you want. Yeah. Um, we'll put the pattern on its own. It's 9 99 You get the instructions for the quilt and for the cushion. And the thing is, I've made this quilt with stock fabrics. So ones that we have all year round. So if you want to make your own version and you want to create your own kit, you can, you can. Um, and, uh, but I mean, if you wanted to change out a couple of the colors or we sell out of the kits, that's okay. Because you can make up your own kit. You know, if you wanted to have more, say more reds, more browns, more caramelly colours and less of the blue, you could absolutely do that. So what I'm going to do is just show you piecing the centre. So I'm going to cut out a little square to start with. Okay, and this is like your sashing squares as well. So I've got that. And then I've also got some narrow strips of fabric. Okay, I'm going to put them together because I need them in pairs. 
Um, you get a lot of impact with solids. I mean, I remember when I first started quilting, you couldn't have given solid fabrics away to quilters. Quilters were not interested in the main, in the sort of early and mid nineties, quilters were not interested in solid fabrics in the main. Um, and um, it's funny, isn't it? How fabrics go through fashions or lose their coolness or suddenly they're back in or, but I've always loved solids for the impact that they can bring to a project. So narrow strips, quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you want to give yourself the tiniest bit of wiggle room, you could cut these narrow strips just an eighth of an inch bigger than you need them. And then you could trim the unit back. So you could sew everything on and then trim it back. But you know me, I'm a big fan of do it properly the first time and then you can just move on. We're all aiming for accuracy, aren't we? We'll get there in the end. <laughs> Do you know, I always say, uh, if it's good enough, it's good enough. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect for me. It doesn't have to be perfect for me. If it has to be perfect for you, that's absolutely cool. You know, you've got to do you. You've got to do you. So I'm just finger pressing those units back, those two strips back. And now I'm going to add my second strip. Now I can see that this is slightly longer than it should. This isn't. This is slightly coming out slightly short, which is telling me that my seam allowance is maybe just a tiny bit skinny, which means I don't have to unpick this, which is a happy day. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the tiniest adjustment to the left with my needle and I'm going to sew both of those again you should be very proud Ben you were an important part of this project it was wonderfully inspiring to get you know a different set of colours I mean very me colours but a different set of colours to work with for a change there we go that fits better so don't ever worry if you have to make a little adjustment. It's much better to make that adjustment now when you're making your first block than to say, oh, it'll do and carry on regardless and then find that none of your units will fit together. That's awful. Nobody wants to make that quilt. So, you know, check your fit constantly check your fit there we go could they have found me a bigger badge do you think could have had a dustbin lid couldn't i have been to my chest <laughs> that would have done it right so i've flipped those back and i've given them a finger press okay and um next up i'm going to put the next round on so same same idea these are narrow strips. Like I say, if you want to, you can always cut them a little bit wider and then trim them back. Now, quite a lot of the piecing on this quilt is half square triangles. And there's lots and lots of different ways of making half square triangles. And if I've got time, I'll, I'll give you a very quick rundown of that as well. So let me just cut my last couple of strips. So... How are we doing kit-wise, Ben? Low double figures. Low double figures left now. Have you got your pattern? Have you got your pattern? Don't forget, you get the pattern in the kit, but if you want to make your own version or you want to sort of, you know, stash the pattern for another time, grab it now. Okay. So I've got one and then I don't like waste. So I'm going to sew these two bits of fabric together because this is patchwork, isn't it? This is patchwork. So I'll press that. 
and now I'll cut my strip out of that okay this is another thing you know don't be afraid to join your fabrics together you know if you haven't got a strip that's long enough but you've got two shorter strips just join them together okay right let's sew the last couple of strips on and that's fitting really nicely now i made that little adjustment just nudged my needle two movements to the left so it just made a slightly more generous seam allowance it's interesting my elna 680 at home the quarter of an inch as set stitch number six for me perfect on the 680 plus that little adjustment i just need to make a little tiny adjustment so we'll flip that back and press and then i'll add my last two sides and this is the center of each block. Now piecing thread color wise, I'd recommend something neutral. This is a, just a kind of soft shell pink that I'm using and that's fine. A shell pink you could use a tan you could use a cream you just you don't want anything too dark because if you had any sort of loose threads or long threads they would peek through the cream you know and you wouldn't want that right so that unit is now done let's just give that a quick press and then we'll do half square triangles so there we go and that is the center of my block all made. So we've made the center block. We've done a bit of paper piecing. Now we're gonna quickly do half square triangle, just to my lovely grubby mat. Now, um, both methods that I've mentioned in the pattern um, sort of start life in the same way. So let's do that. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna use chocolate and aqua. <laughs> Everybody likes chocolate. Good morning, Stuart. Thank you for the wonderful demo. You're giving me confidence to have a go. The quilt is gorgeous. You should feel very proud. Oh, thank you, Annette. That's so kind. The thing that makes me proudest is when you want to make something that I've designed. That's my proudest moment. Now, boring technical thing, but it's important. Yep. Right. Right. Okay. 23 kits left. Okay, that's fine, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, that's not boring, that's good. We've got 23 kits left. 23 kits left, way more in baskets. So I've put both of my fabrics together. Okay. Put both my fabrics together like this. Um, now, couple of different ways you can do half square triangles There's loads of different ways really aren't there but the most common way is to draw a line on your lighter fabric from corner to corner like so and then stitch half a uh, quarter of an inch on either side now if you don't want to go to the trouble of marking all of that stack your squares together and just cut from corner to corner and then take your triangles to your machine it's it's nothing like nothing like as worrisome as you think it is in fact i'm going to do it i'm going to do it you know the method don't you do sewing quarter of an inch either side so i won't bother doing that so we haven't drawn a line i'm just going to cut straight down the middle okay now I'm going to go to my machine. I've got my quarter of an inch. Stitch length of two will do it. And let's sew. So what, I'm do what I've done here actually is I've added one eighth of an inch 
to the cutting dimensions. Now I've, I've already done that in the pattern for you, but what I'm saying is if you want to make them large and trim them back, you want to just cut your shapes about an eighth of an inch bigger than the pattern tells you to. Right, so I've done that. I'm going to press the seam allowance back. You can do this with your nail, you can do this with a, an iron, however you want to do it. You could use a seam roller. And because I've made them slightly larger than I need, my next job is to trim them back. Now it's really helpful at this point if you've got a small ruler and a rotating cutting mat. I've got half of that, I've got the rotating cutting mat and a massive ruler, but that's okay. So I wanna trim these back and I'm gonna trim these back. I've got my extra around the edge. I'm lining up the diagonal, the 45 degree line through the center. I'm gonna trim two sides and then I'm gonna rotate the whole thing and I'm going to trim the remaining two sides. Again, line up your neat edges and your diagonal and there's my perfect half square triangle. Um, it is actually a, a, quite, a, quite a good way of getting really accurate units for a project. Of course, it is an extra step, but if that extra step allows you to make the quilt you wanna make, why not do it? You know, it's not a race to the finish. Do what you need to do to get the results that you want. And there we go, trimmed. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So that's everything you need to know. Center, paper piecing, and your half square triangles. Need to do a recap. <laughs> need to do a recap. Right, so let's have a look at the quilt first of all. Let's have a look at the quilt. Here it is, me and Ben had a little baby together. We've called it New Mexico, a uh, little collaboration. He started with the color palette and then I created this quilt. So New Mexico, you've got 13 beautiful blocks that feature all of those colors, all that sort of desert New Mexico Santa Fe look. Okay, you've got the paper piece setting triangles around the outside and simple sashing through the center just to separate those blocks out and give them space to shine. Uh, easy to make longer, wider if you want to. You will need more fabric of course, but these quilts are made from stock solid fabrics. So once you've got your kit, if you want to make it bigger, you can, you can. Uh, now then, you need the pattern and I've got the pattern right here. So pattern on its own, pattern on its own. Uh, it was so funny, we, Charlie and I went out for the weekend for his birthday and we went over to Nunnington Hall. We were trying to get to um, somewhere else, but uh, not Nostel Priory, something out there anyway, and we couldn't find it. So, but I said to Charlie, oh look, there's a gate, that will, that's a great place to do a photograph, stop the car, stop the car. So we nipped out, we took a picture and uh, then carried on our day. I like the contrast. I like the contrast between this rusty old gate and the quilt. Um, so full pattern there, you get all of your instructions, all of your step-by-step -step photographs, how to put your quilt together. There's also reference in there to a couple of supporting videos, foundation paper piecing video that you can watch. Um, uh, on my YouTube channel. You get a full colour layout. You also get a full outline drawing so you can colour in and create your own New Mexico quilt and then you get your foundations. Obviously don't cut these up, photocopy them, make sure they are exactly the same size as the originals and then use those and uh, a bit of inspiring photography to show you how I put it together and how I quilted it. Um, 
hope you enjoy it. <laughs> hope you enjoy it. And then we've got a full fabric kit to make the quilt for now. Not for long because it's about to sell out. We've got 15 of these left. But you get two and a half meters of cream solid for all your backgrounds, for your piecing and all of your sashing. Okay, that's that. Two and a half meters of that. And then you also get 10 half meters of fabric. So there's brunette, terracotta, uh, sapphire, aqua, navies for your binding, gold, orange, teal, paprika, and sapphire. Um, I hope you like it, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like, you know, because I really love this quilt and I'm very proud of this quilt. Um, really because I'm proud of Ben for putting the colours together. And then, and then I think the, you know, the finished quilt I'm really pleased with. Um, and interestingly, um, uh, obviously at Sewing Street, we have lots of people that are very passionate about sewing and quilts and things like that. But we also have people here who are here because they're photographers or people who are here because they're amazing at design or whatever, you know, not necessarily into quilts. But there have been some comments from people here in the building. I don't, I don't normally like quilts, but I like that. And I had a lovely message from a lady, a viewer, who said, uh, my husband doesn't like quilts, but he saw yours and said, oh, I actually like that one. So that to me is a huge compliment it's a huge compliment um so get your pattern get your kit less than 10 of the kits left okay i'm going to give you time to check out don't forget as well we've got some backing fabrics that would be suitable for this um, lots on the website have a look during the break we're going to go for a break uh, and don't forget that free pmp use code stuart pp23 and you will get free postage and packing all day long on anything that you buy from sewing street not just from the shows but also from the website too i'll see you after the break with wendy orlando Hi, I'm Becky. I'm the soft craft expert for Crafters Companion. Um, I come from London and I've been sewing pretty much all my life. I particularly enjoy doing embroidery. I'm really keen on that, but I've, I've, my background is um, dressmaking and also sort of patchwork and quilting. Um, so I do awful lot of sewing for all sorts of different things. I suppose once you start sewing, you start doing lots of other kinds of sewing. So I particularly like got into needlepoint um, during lockdown, but I suppose embroidery is probably my real passion. My mum was a costume designer, um, so we were always sort of surrounded by bits of fabric and material and ribbons and that kind of thing. And I was always making teddies um, and my dolls clothes as a small child. So it was just something that was quite natural. And in fact, I've got so used to being able to sew, um, it's just become a natural sort of part of what I do. Um, I'm always fiddling around with fabric, as my husband puts it, um, making something new, um, trying something out. Always measure twice, cut once. I'm, I'm a great one for not doing that and I always regret it. And making sure that you've got an iron to hand is really important. I use a tiny little, um, sort of almost like a travel iron that I have right next to my desk when I'm working so it doesn't take up too much space. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Fine. 
fan of Sewing Street, why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. Ah, oh, I'm grinning from ear to ear because I've just read Maria's lovely message that says, Morning, Stuart PP23. I love it. Happy anniversary. Don't you go anywhere, you gorgeous man. I won't. I promise. I promise. I, do you know, I did say, actually, um, that, uh, that, that if I stayed for two years, I would buy a flat or something down here because I'm a little bit tired of staying in hotels. Sorry, but I am. But, um, yeah, shall I? Yeah. Do it. I'll and come. Then, to, we could I, have then I can parties. come and stay with you. Housewarming. Yes. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then Ben could come around and make over the apartment. Yes. And he could decorate it all. And then I could hang Charlie's quilt <laughs> on the wall. There you go. Excellent. Look, let's move on. I've got Wendy, Wendy Orlando here. Hey, Wendy. Good morning. Wendy, it's been so long, too know, long since too I long. saw you last. I know. And I asked specially for Wendy Orlando for today because I absolutely adore her. I love what she does. She's amazing energy and personality and amazing skills. Oh, thank amazing you. Amazing <laughs> skills. Uh, just look at that quilt that's hanging. Not behind me, but behind Wendy. Look at that. I love it, Wendy. <laughs> I love it. I, do you know, I spotted this on your Facebook, I think, this week. And I didn't even realise what it was and what it was for, but I loved it. You didn't recognise your own fabrics. Well, isn't that bizarre, you know? <laughs> 
but don't you just love the way Wendy's used a blanket stitch to create a stitched flower in the center of each of those blocks is so cute and then Wendy's used my um, rainbow is my favorite color pastel strips to create these blocks oh gorgeous let's get straight into it let's get straight into it now we've got two patterns and they work rather beautifully together to create that project that you just saw so to start with everybody needs these everybody needs these this is the crafty company guide to quilt as you go now i remember we launched this together mm -hmm. And it was so phenomenally popular and with good reason because the vast majority of quilters struggle to quilt a whole quilt. It's too big, it's too bulky, it's too heavy and, um, you know, makes life difficult. This is Quilt As You Go. So Wendy, in her instructions, shows you with plenty of real examples how, exactly how, to piece or applique a block, quilt that block, top, batting, backing, quilt it and then join those quilted blocks together with sashing strips so it is beautiful front and back and it looks absolutely perfect. So these are the quilt as you go instructions and these can be used to break down, well, a huge number of different quilts. For example, my New Mexico quilt could be broken down and done quilt as you go because it's got the sashing in between the blocks. So it would work for that. Um, so those are the instructions for 9 99 If you haven't got these, you need these in your life. So that is general instructions for quilt as you go. But Wendy's created this special block called the Floral Delight, specially for the show. Especially for now, you. Now look at the price. Oh, thank you. Look at the price. Four pounds. Four pounds for this. Free P and P. Stuart P P two three. So this is basically the 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 the, the cost of your P and P, isn't it? Normally, that's four quid. But what you're getting there is, so it's no instructions on how to do quilt as you go. You do need the separate instructions for that. But this is a supplement, but it teaches you how to create the center block, the piecing around it, how to put the whole thing together. You've got that motif. Now, Wendy has um, stitched that. So it's like an outline, almost like red work <laughs> embroidery, which I absolutely love. You could also use that as a template to do applique, couldn't you? if you prefer, or a mixture of the two. Um, get that, honestly, it's brilliant. Oh, it's about to sell out. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> okay. Right, uh, well, the good news is we've got two kits. We've got two kits. So let me show you. Let's start with the brights. Uh, sorry, the pastels, sorry, beg your pardon. Which is the one that's hanging behind Wendy. And I think that would make, make the most gorgeous baby quilt, wouldn't it? Wouldn't beautiful. it make the most gorgeous absolutely. baby quilt? It's, it's understated. It's just yeah. beautiful. It is absolutely yeah. just stunning. Um, Thrill to bits with what you've done there. So in your kit, you're going to get both sets of instructions. So you get your Floral Delight quilt block and your quilt as you go instructions. You get your pastel strip panel which i will show you in just a second and you get a great big chunk of white fabric uh how much three meters three meters of white fabric that's got to be enough for the right. backing <laughs> right so you can make this yep. out of two and a half meters right but it's you would have to use the ends of where you cut the block out yeah you'd have to remember to to use the ends well if you've cut across them mm -hmm. so we've put in an extra half meter ah, just in case got you. you do that got you and we've got enough to bind it binding but this is everything so Front, it's back, literally everything binding, the only thing you'll need value. is the, the wadding that's incredible value that's absolutely unbelievable and you've actually got the extra fabric really yes. Yes. to make it easy three meters of solid white here's the panel that you get it features 32 two and a half inch strips and they're half strips so there's about 27 inches in each strip and you get 32 of them and there they are look at all those lovely pastels 
Now these strips are kind of edge to edge, two and a half inch wide strips. You cut them apart, don't you? Yes. And then sew them together yeah. again in whatever order you want. So you can create your own little pastel rainbow or you could mm. emphasize different colors in different blocks. Couldn't you? You could have all the purples into the blues and the pinks and the reds and oranges moving across the quilt. So you get that as well. So absolutely phenomenal value for $49.99. What size is the quilt, Wendy? I have, uh, it is uh, 37 and, oh, I've got, it's not in there. Well, because this is a quilt as you go, you can do what you like. Yep. The block, the finished block is 12 and a half. But okay. what I would say is to cut it down to 12. Right. So 36, between 36, 36 and 37 and a half. Yeah. Great. Right. Perfect. Lovely. Great size quilt then. Mm -hmm. Amazing value. 49.99. So that's the pastel version. We've also got a bright version. Now, please may I ask you, Wendy, to hold that cushion up. So this is a cushion. Wendy's used one block to create, look Ooh. at this cushion. Now you used your Cricut machine to create the centre. I have a Cricut machine, so I, I put, I designed that and then did that on the front. But I know there's also a lot of people out there that have bought the Cricuts yep. and they just needed a little bit of inspiration. Yep. And that's just text. Yeah. And well, and I, I just bought in a pair of scissors and a, a little needle, but all that is is text. And how stunning does that look? Yeah, it looks amazing. If you've got the brother embroidery machine, you could embroider the center mm. square, trim it to size, and then use it in the cushion. You could do the flower as an outline in your pattern. You could do it as an applique. You could leave mm. the center completely plain and just have it as that beautiful kind of uh, bright rainbow frame. I think that's stunning, Wendy. And I put I put a little a little white flange yep. just to take it away from that center, and then just put a little border little tiny border and it just makes the center pop it is immaculate yeah. wendy yeah. i love it i absolutely love it i covet it so in that kit you get both sets of instructions you quilt as you go general instructions so this isn't quilt specific you get your block for your floral delight with your applique or your quilting design on there as well as your piecing. You get your three meters of white solid and then you get your bright panel. So the difference is here, you've got your bright panel and let me show you this. So if you love those kind of dual bright, intense colors, there you go, boom. There's your bright. And again, remember, you're gonna cut those strips apart. You're gonna piece them however you want to. So actually, you can make the quilt with this, of course. Do you need extra fabric to make the cushion? Would you have enough leftovers? Um, you have just a tiny sliver at the end. Yeah. So you have about that much on each of the, each of the two colorways. Yeah. So if you were very good at adapting things, then instead of, Doing, piecing it together, you could just use that those strips of fabric yep, as the and border. make you a cushion. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so you get a cushion as well because you're getting more or less an extra half meter of white. Of the white, yes. So the two combine, so you can make the cushion and the quilt. Or you can make a smaller quilt. Or you could do a, do a three by three and then some cushions. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely love it to bits. Wonderful, isn't it? Uh, Sue says, morning all. Glad to see Wendy back. It's been far too long. Her enthusiasm always gets my sojo back. That's lovely. That's what uh, I like Catherine's to hear. <laughs> message to say, got my quilt uh, uh, as your instruction and your instructions at last. Keep missing out when it's been on previously. Happy anniversary, Stuart. Oh, got the quilt as you go instructions as she kept on missing out previously. That's fab. Uh, and Steph says, uh, please, many more years with you on Sewing Street, Stuart. I always learn something new and have fun when you're on. More power to your elbow. Oh, thank you. Zahida asks, have I missed your quilt hanging behind you? This one right here. Do we have any of these quilt kits left? We have the instructions. The kit's gone, but we do have the instructions. Grab the instructions, Zahida, because you should be able to make your own quilt kit. They're solids. We have them in stock all year round. If there was a colour that was out of stock, you could substitute it with something near or you could create your own colourway. Wouldn't that look completely gorgeous done all in shades of blue with a cream or white background? What about shades of pinks, oranges, reds? What about having a black background? Anyway, this show isn't about my quilt. 
about you when well I, can you... i just say though that i it, it looks amazing on screen because i was watching yesterday and saw it thank but you. in the flesh yeah it's even nicer oh thank you anyway enough of all that <laughs> tell me about this gorgeous quilt as you go please well um as well you may not know but i'm I'm a newbie with quilting. I've only been doing it about three years. So I actually am a quilter now, but quilter. I am now. Um, but when I made my quilts, I'd made a topper because before a quilt is a quilt, it's a topper. Yeah. And then I would really get scared at I've got this big topper and now I've got to quilt it with three layers. Yeah. And I took my time, but I would always get just to the end or near the end and then I'd go wonky and then I'd sulk and I'd throw it in the UFO yeah. pile and then didn't do anything with it so I wanted a method that would allow you to quilt as you go now this method has been around for a long long time but what I did struggle to find was something that had a wide sash most of the quilt of you goes and I just show them here and they don't it doesn't have to be a quilt no. it can be a table runner it can mm. be a bed runner mm. you can still quilt as you go if you have a block and I couldn't find anything that gave me the wider sashing mm. the only one that I could do was this one which was the thin one and I love that mm -hmm. because it gives the impression if you've got your quilt up here it looks like you're looking through a window doesn't right. it it's got the window but I couldn't find anything that gave me comprehensive instructions to do that so this is what these instructions do they show you how to do both methods mm. but oh fab and they're slightly different because if you do a wider sashing you have to put some wadding in otherwise it's all like floppy and it's just thin fabric yeah. there's no wadding in the middle yes so there's all the calculations in there now what this quilt what the instructions do not say is you need to make a quilt 40 by 60 you need to make it 50 by 70 what it says is you need to design your quilt uh, your block and then use your blocks to put it together as a quilt now i have got some examples here now this one i haven't finished binding yet oh you're coming over to see me yeah oh lovely um oh so you don't well, have to do square blocks no so i'm just going to sh yeah to show you the my, my mm. and the iron don't you burn yourself Ooh, no, on my iron oh, not on um, my birthday oh no no um <laughs> yeah don't cut yourself on anything yes <laughs> so the general rule is and this one is a good example because in here i've got the the wider sashing and the thinner sashing and then the thinner and the widest so clever. as long as you make it square at the end yeah, yeah. but the general rule is you make all of your blocks the same height if you're working in rows yeah but if you're working in columns then you need to make the columns all the same width got you but it doesn't matter you can have a four foot a four foot you could have a four, you could have a four inch section yeah and then a 12 inch section and then a one inch you can have them whatever size you want as long as they are the same height i see you're you're using that adage you know where they say like teach a person uh, or, or give a person a fish and they eat for a day mm -hmm. teach a person to fish and you feed them for life exactly. this is a method we can use forever more yep. and it's yep. so empowering when you've got the knowledge isn't it and you're right it will not work for absolutely every block now if you're working with um little pixelated a picture so you're creating a picture out of small squares yeah. you won't be able to use no, it for that like because block to block you've yeah. got to have a sashing in between the you, blocks yes um ideally you you yeah. have to have a block that would work if you put a sashing because right. of course this this looks like hey, that's a baby one but yeah. it's it is a sashing it's a little frame yeah. so if you have a block that you can add a sashing to mm. that will work but then deputy joan took one of the quilt kits that we had a William Morris quilt kit that didn't have sashing and she chunked it into into sections and put narrow sashing and if anything it made the design yeah. look even better it was yeah. fabulous she was a massive quilt she'd have never quilted it as that size you know but she's made a massive quilt and it looks amazing yeah so it's such a great method well it is and but as I say anything that's pixelated that mm -hmm. creates a picture you won't be able to do that because unless it looks like they're going through the window yeah now this so this, <gasps> this so this is what actually sold quilt as you go to me so we have a beautiful quilt here now um this was one of the it has been on previously i like to make quilts this size because i like indoor picnics mm, and nice. yeah so we have when the kids were little we used to have little indoor picnics and have a quilt but the beauty of this is yes it's lovely on the front but oh my goodness Party it's on the just back. as beautiful on the back now you don't 
always get that if you're quilting a quilt. Because no, 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 you don't. I don't know about you. I tend to put a plain fabric on the back. Yeah, yeah. I just Amazing. do. Amazing. Look at that. Yeah. So this is a double-sided quilt. Double-sided quilt. Yeah. So you could even have like you know spring, summer, autumn, winter. Oh, yes. You could have. You could yeah. do that with runners, couldn't you? Where you had seasonal ones that were two seasons yep. in one runner. Well, so this one, this one is the. Very this is like that. So you've got. Um, you've got nice floral here, but then if you wanted plain, we've got plain oh, yeah. on the back. Oh, that's very bright, that fabric, isn't Lovely. it? Lovely. Um, and then, so yes, we've got autumn, winter on here. Oh, we've, we've got spring, summer on there. Yeah, so lovely. yes, and, and for me, anything that will save you money, because you can double up. Yeah, of course. So you just turn, and also if someone spills something on at the dinner table, you just turn it over. Which is likely, <laughs> Wendy, oh, it's yes. likely. So I am going to show you how to do that. We have got time now, but there was just yeah. a couple more that I wanted to show. Oh, and these show. are spectacular. Right, so, and I, I'm not sure if there are any. Do you any... need full length? I don't think so, do No, we're all right here, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if there any are back in stock, but this was my ribbon quilt. Now, if any of you haven't made this yet, it does work with quilt as you go. So this, oh, yeah, there. So this is the quilt as a quilt. Yeah. Now. So this is made traditional yep. style, block to block. I did quilted it. Quilted as a whole thing. I did do it, but it was a little. Um, but you, you didn't know, like I've, it. I, um, no. No. But if we turn this over, turn it around yeah. now you see here what well, I've done white which was really silly isn't it but I haven't put much quilting on it because no. I struggled you kind of just gone around I the have. outside blocks I've just, because and and with when you use wadding you have to sew we don't have to there's no rule but it's better to sew within a certain range mm. so that when you launder it you yeah. don't lose all the wadding inside right, exactly so that's beautiful it's really really lovely yeah but oh thank you for um that's all right. I'll yeah, keep, yeah, I'll keep you, you right. I'll keep you right. <laughs> but so this one is the quilt as you go version of Which it. Which instantly I like more because I absolutely adore this red sashing in between yeah. the blocks. Yeah. Um, and I can see some gorgeous decorative stitching as well. Mm -hmm. Is that quilting? That's quilting. So Have I made at each block at a time. But oh. the beauty of this one is. And now, and it doesn't Ooh. really pick it up, I don't think, on screen, oh, does yes, it? Oh, yes, it does. It does. Look at that. You can see the quilting. Oh, dear. I did, oh, I didn't you leave. You did no. tell me. <laughs> you did tell me. That is fabulous, isn't it? Look at that. And there's no way I wouldn't have wanted to have done all of this. No. And I no. love machine quilting. But that would have, yeah. Well, you. the trouble is, you, Beautiful. one part of it, you think, oh, yes, I can do it. And then as you go to turn around, you've got the whole weight of the quilt. And then you struggle. And then you go wonky. And then, if you're like me, you sulk because yeah. you like it. Nothing should ever be perfect because it's handmade, but you want it to be as best as it possibly you want can. To do the, you want to enjoy every process as well. And this is a way of enjoying the quilting process, isn't it? Are you just throwing my quilts under oh, there? Oh, definitely not. It's beautifully <laughs> folded. And so like this one. Now, I did put a plain back on this one because I wanted a plain back. Mm -hmm. But to be able to quilt a... So, I'm just leaving you to it then. <laughs> to be able to quilt a circle yep. and the segments yep. neatly... Yep. It would take you forever. Of course it would. And there you can see on the back. I haven't used the Absolutely gorgeous. No, but I mean, the thing is, it looks absolutely immaculate. And, you know, everything is neat. Everything is smooth. There's no ripples or wrinkles. There's no bagging because you've quilted evenly. And with this one, if you want to hide it, then you use the same colour fabric as the back for the sashing. And unless you get really close to it, you can't see that you've used sashing. It's fabulous. I'm yeah. sold. How do yeah. I do it? Right. OK, then. So let's just throw all my quilts under there. So the first thing you're going to do... Now, you don't have to use the block that's in the kit. Right. But it's there. And you should use it, really, I, th I, I think. I think so, personally. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make the, the block because the instructions, the instructions literally are, are step by step. Are they step. sold out on their own? Yeah. So it talks yeah. you the whole way through, but that is included in the kit, isn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. Now, I didn't realise I was going to get your strips, so I've cut them all together and sewn them. Cut them all out and mm -hmm. sewn them all back together yeah, again. But then you choose where you put them. I wouldn't use. I I would do that. I wouldn't just use it because obviously I have calculated the seam allowance, yeah. which means they will fit. But I'm um, also what I've done 
is I've gone random, not random. Yeah. So I've got on the top row, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and either pink or purple. Mm. And then the bottom row, red, yellow, green, blue, pink. Yeah. But then that meant that I was able to just pick any three yeah, yeah, yeah. and put in the centre. In the sides. And they all look... They all look the same. I think this is absolutely beautiful. I really like it. Now you could have all flowers if you wanted to. Yeah. Or all cross hatching. Or all cross hatch. Yeah. Yes. You don't have to have or you can put I did try and do one of you, but it looked a bit funny, so I thought I can't. Oh, well, like a stitched version of me. Oh, I need to see that, Wendy. No. You don't. no. Oh no. No, oh, no, no, you no, you really I'll trade don't. you for a piece of cake no, later. No, you, no, I didn't bring it in, thankfully. Oh, and I don't think anyone will be able to find it at home. <laughs> Uh, and, well, we have we've got these in the next show, and oh, don't you just love them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Body ripping. Um, so I have prepared the mm -hmm. blocks, uh, some of the blocks. Now, with these, I I have a keeper, so I put them in my keeper and I keep it in there. Don't trim them until you need them. Okay, so quilt them as you would normally yes. <laughs> with your batting and your backing yeah. and you want about an inch extra all round right. and don't trim that down don't until you are ready to put them yes. together. Make all your blocks, keep them and then trim them down. So what you would do is you make a sandwich as you said. So I, I do it every single time. I always use plain don't I when I... The back is the right side. Yeah. And then you have the wrong side facing your wadding yep. and then you have your block on top right side facing up and you want the wadding a little bit bigger than the, the here and I like to cut my lining a little bit bigger yeah. but if you want to optimise your fabric so you yep. can get as much out as you want yep. keep it the same size as the wadding the, the, the thing that you need to do is have this slightly smaller yeah now that's a very good reason here and you'll see it in the cross hatch now to do the cross hatch if you are going to do this I always say to measure from corner to corner in this instance don't measure from corner to corner make sure that these are on point right yeah. so when you put your ruler down here yeah make sure that it goes across these two because yes. you will find that it doesn't it may not go across yeah, those fair enough. and someone's eyes are going to get drawn into this mm -hmm. rather than this which yeah, we're probably absolutely. going to chop off anyway yeah. um, and then I've chosen if you want to do exactly what I've done I've done one and a half inches between mine really nice. because that gave me enough quilting to look really lovely in that centre So did block. you mark that on like with a friction pen something like that? I did yeah so I put the first one along here mm -hmm. and then I placed my ruler along this line at the one and a half inch mark and drew yeah moved it up on the one and a half inch mark yeah and I am not like I don't know what you do I draw all my all lines, lines both ways yeah. because if you draw these and then turn them round and then draw the next ones after you've stitched it's going to be lumpy and bumpy you've got texture already yeah. from the quilting yeah. it makes it harder I yeah. agree with you there so when you're making your sandwich make sure it's as flat as it possibly be I'm a huge fan of 505 yeah love it huge fan but or June Taylor basting spray. Have you ever yeah. used that? No, oh, 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 I, I oh it's to, lovely. Oh, I yeah. Um, but when you've drawn your lines, do not press it if you're using an erasable. Yeah. <laughs> because then you're just pressing. exactly. And exactly. so with this and one, it. so with this one, I put the. Um, is it in here? It's here, my Oh, love. it's there, you cheat. Yep. Yeah, so with that one, I put that one behind the fabric. So instead of tracing off, I'll just show you on a piece here. I put that behind the block. So I yep. made the block. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah with, the, the with the rainbow border. Yeah, and then put that behind it and try and centre it as much as you can. Yep. And then I use my friction pen and I drew round it. Yep. And the beauty of the friction pen is when you take it off and it doesn't look as central as maybe you want it to you could just iron it off mm -hmm. and do Have it again go. Yeah. yeah now i am going to do a little bit of quilting for you Ooh. now with this one um i wanted something in the center that looked like i had hand stitched it yeah yeah and that really does i thought it really complemented the fact that this is like really modern and yeah. angular yeah and then you've got this really sweet little almost hand stitched yeah yeah it's beautiful now I don't know um, my stitch I mean I have that do you you have that you must have that stitch everyone stitch. everyone's got a blanket stitch haven't yeah. they? now I did a two width and mm -hmm. a two length for mine okay. if you go too big 
then it kind of runs away with you yeah. and you can't get it's hard to get around, yes, court, around the, in a circle isn't it but you need the balance between having it long enough to cope with the three layers that we're now working with mm. so you don't want to go to so small that it it bunches it all up Absolutely. because with quilting i would normally do a three yeah now i'm doing a two on here so be but, a bit big for this wouldn't it but a three would be too yeah. big and then as i've always said with these what you want to do is you want to look at your what your stitch does now it'll go forward back side to side so you want to make sure that when you turn any corners mm -hmm. you're going on a forward instead of a right because if you do a right it's going to bounce out and right. you're going to get bounce outs yeah so that's what we're going to do here and i still i mean i know my machine inside out wendy but i still before i start sewing a project i actually hand crank the machine yep. through a complete yep. run of, of you know what i mean so yep. i can see where the needle is swinging where it's hitting yep. just to make sure it's in the right position before i start stitching and that's I don't really want to important pick anything. that is really important that you do that um because there's nothing worse especially with the decorative stitches some of them are really quite dense aren't yes they? they are you don't really want to be unpicking them now what i have done i've pulled a little bit of length out of my bobbin yeah. and my needle yeah because i want that when i finished and then i'm going to stitch i'm going to start in the corner and put my needle down now it's just a little bit to the left so I take it out and I put it where I want and then I can get going right I'm going the wrong way let's just take that out because it's got to be really lovely yes it's and got that's, to be lovely. that's the good thing about sewing is if you're not happy Start again. Pick it out, exactly. Yeah. Carol says, morning all. Oh, morning. Viv says, hi, Stuart, happy second year. Hello, Wendy. Oh. Pest here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love the pattern, but sorry, I won't be making 14 of these <gasps> like I did your bag. Exactly, yes. You will, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this would actually be lovely for a bag as well, wouldn't it? I can imagine oh, yes. that as a bag front. Yep. Be Cushion, gorgeous. table Cushions. runner. Yeah, runner. Bed runner. Really nice. And of course, as well, you know, Wendy's examples are square set, but you could do an on point set mm -hmm. with quilt as you go as well. Yeah. Um, and that would look fabulous. And I think this is brilliant for anyone that's maybe starting out their journey. Um, just to get used to the technique of quilting because yeah. you're doing it in such a small area oh, you yeah, haven't I got mean, the whole quilt but joan's been quilting for i think minimum 40 years wow. and she still uses quilt mm. as you go because yeah. it's a really fabulous method and it gives amazing results it's not just you know i can't handle a big quilt therefore i have to do quilt as you go yeah. it's a beautiful technique and it works you know so there's lots of great reasons and also it's absolutely amazing i've seen a couple of uh, people like teaching their granddaughters or oh, grandchildren great. Great. and what you could do is say to them okay so i want a a block 10 10 inches yeah and then they go through the whole process and if you get each family member to do it then you can oh, that'd be amazing yeah, and sewing that. groups that Technical would be fantastic question for you oh. sue says <laughs> what weight and type of thread do you both use for quilting it's just the standard. I don't do anything special. Like sew all thread, like yep. Gutterman sew all yes, thread. Yes, that's exactly the, the thread that I yeah. use. Yes. Yeah. Now also I have the was oh, but it was when I first came here. They, they, they sold um really beautiful like a almost like a silky thread that's a little bit thinner. Now that works as well. Yeah. But also the machine, your machine. You know your machine. Mm. This will take anything. Mm. I have a machine at home that sniffs if it's I put. Temperamental. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so get to know. Just try it on your machine. But I think you make a good point, and Viv, this is this is good to know that something like a Gutterman. I'm mm. a big fan. Gutterman sew all thread, polyester mm. sew all thread comes in hundreds of colours. Just the standard weight uh, is beautiful for piecing, applique, and for quilting. It won't yeah. let you down. It's very very easy to use it's color fast light fast it's just terrific um, you can buy speciality quilting threads which are a little thicker mm -hmm. which give a bolder quilting line that's great use a slightly thicker needle in 90. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use a finer thread too so when i'm long arm quilting oh, um, yes. yeah. oftentimes the thread i will use is a finer 
weight um, and the bobbin thread I use I think is an 80 weight yeah I so use it's a fine, very yeah. fine in the bobbin yeah. um, but experiment the best thing you can do is experiment you can use metallic threads for quilting holographic glow in oh, the dark that, the metallic variegated. are amazing but just make sure that you use the right needle for yeah, them right because needle. otherwise it, it kind shreds. of shreds the thread shreds yeah. the thread doesn't it but um also if you want to like i've done on the back here so that when you turn it over you've got a double-sided quilt put the same color thread in your bobbin yeah as you have in the top I agree. if you want it to blend to the back then i would have put a white having said that there's always that chance that you get that little bobble through it's very very but difficult it, yeah. to balance the tension so perfectly if you've used like a black backing and on and white mm. on the top and you try to use white thread in the top and black thread in the back it won't work yeah it won't work you're giving yourself a headache and don't start messing around with the detentions and stuff no. like that because it's just the way it works isn't yeah. it to actually stitch yeah. it pulls a little bit of that's just the way yeah. that it bonds together if you isn't want it? your thread to blend on the back and yeah. you don't and you want to use the same color use an 80 weight mm. it's so fine and if you use something like a neutral gray or a neutral tan it will bl blend with virtually anything. it's negligible isn't it you can't yeah. see you'd i wouldn't be able to see it because you've done all that quilting so, in that oh, well time. i've done round look there. at that beautiful so, so pretty so you've yes. done that black see i'd have never thought to use a blanket stitch for quilting but that looks the business doesn't it Yes. Absolute business. Um, and I've left my ends long. Yeah. And then what you would do, I would do You're this. a good girl. I, I have literally, I knew you, you'd be here looking at my <laughs> I ends. I don't do that. No. Oh. I do not do that. When, for my starts and <laughs> yes. finishes on my quilting, I do about five tiny micro stitches at the start. Well, you've just gone down in my and estimation, end, Mr. And Hillard. then I snip the thread level with the quilt top. Sorry. Sorry about it. Not sorry. Not sorry. Whatever method works, eh? I'm saying no. Those purse per slips. <laughs> Do I go back to me at the counter? Be uh, gone. Viv says, can I ask, <laughs> does quilt as you go, oh, I'm glad you came today. <laughs> can I ask, does quilt as you go make the seams lumpy? Viv, no, it doesn't. Does, it doesn't, does it? Not at all. But keep in mind, it's got, you've got yeah. seams anyway. If you put sashing in, you've got the quarter of an inch seam anyway. You've got no more oh, seams, no, have no, you? No, yeah, no, I can actually understand. No, sorry. Can that's you? not, no question is ever silly. And I absolutely. No, I it's a silly question. That's not. But, I, absolutely understand that go on with the quilt as you go so the thinner method which is this method you can't si are you checking my seams out i'm just feeling if it's yeah, lumpy I know, and it's I know. not right so under here this is the better one to see you can't see it because it's hidden they're yeah. butted together yeah they're literally just yeah. butted yeah. and then you've got seam allowances on these yeah. fabrics but you'd have seam, the same mm -hmm. seam allowances if it was yeah. pieced and then layered and quilted mm -hmm. so there's no more seams nope. and you haven't overlapped one block with another nope. there isn't a double layer of batting no nope. i get it and no, again what well, i'll show you smooth. now when we come to do the larger one um because you put the wadding in there and it's the exact size you need yeah. there's no overlap no lumpiness so there that either. actually is a very good question it is a good question is. very Viv, good i question. hope that helps we've also got another it's a lot of oh, technical it's questions te oh, that's what we're here for because the professor <laughs> is in the house uh, can i ask do you use a walking foot for quilt as you go personally again i i'm very honored i'm very very honored to have this machine no I don't, but I, it's there. I literally have it as a pull down if yeah. I need it. So it kind of is like a walking foot. If I want it, but I, I find that I don't need to. But absolutely, if you want to use the walking foot, do it. Yeah, do but it. you can use darning foot, do free motion quilting. Oh, yes. As quilt as you yes. go as well. Yeah. You, anything, you can quilt it any way you like. Yeah. You can use decorative stitches. Yeah. Oh. You, and this is the you beauty of it. You can hand quilt you can and hand then do quilt, quilt as you go. And you can, if you've got, if you're going to do what this is and you've got 12, you can quilt every single one differently. So you can have a go. This yeah. is what I would do if it was me. All of those ones I'd use a different technique on. Yeah, so nice I'd have a bit idea. of free motion yeah. and then I'd do my cross hatch because I do love a cross yeah, hatch. Me too. I'd do my flower, do a little bit of hand. So I would use this as a sampler so that it's got all Gorgeous the different idea. techniques yeah and or have a go. if you've invested in the pars uh, quilting rulers 
you work on small areas and then you join them together with quilt as you go so okay. i mean it can be used for everything yeah ruler quilting you could do sashko block hand mm. quilted sashko blocks oh, and then join them that would be lovely you yeah you That'd could do oh i mean there's so much you could do you could do crazy quilted blocks Yep. and then join those quilts. Oh, that would be go. really good. Qua qu crazy, crazy quilting would be fantastic. But yes, this is the quilt as you go is a perfect opportunity to actually make any. You can make a yeah. four piece. You can make a nine piece. You can practice your half square and triangles, yeah. and you can practice your FPP. So you could, could. do all that. Well, you could, couldn't you? Yeah. That and then, good. as long as it looks okay with a bit of sashing on, yeah, you can do it for quilts as you go. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I, and you can see I, I am a little bit excited about this technique. You are. I absolutely. Pauline says happy anniversary, Stuart. Hope you're having fun. Well, I could hardly have anything but fun with this one next. Have you taken to me. one and of with my? Your company, have you taken one of my? Um, I took the things out of the way because no, you were that throwing one. them around. I wasn't uh, throwing oh, them around. Oh, there's one under the table. You put it under there. Oh no, there's another one that needs. That's it. I found him. I found him. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> Have right. I taken it? Have I taken it? We've right. got we've got the video proof that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've just thought of something. Go on. I've put mine all the same way. But oh look, there's nothing to stop you nice. with a little bit of design going on here, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. But again, I've done the same with this one. I've done it so that I've got the same colour top and bottom ish, mm -hmm. and then I can just go rogue in the middle, mm. and they 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 match, mm. don't they? They they go Love together. Love the bright stone like this. It's right, gorgeous. right. Now in the instructions, I do tell you to trim your blocks to size. Now, the finished block should be twelve and a half. But when you quilt something, especially like a crosshatch, it reduces the size of the block slightly. And that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. This one didn't reduce as much because I only had a little bit of quilting. Mm. But this one, and it, we're not talking about meters, we're talking no. about millimeters. Yeah. So I, if you're going to make this, I would trim it to 12 inches. Yes, yeah, fair enough. Now to do that, you want to make sure that you- On a large square ruler? Yes, thank you. I, and get this oh, very well, no, large no, one. No, 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 ah. no. See you this? Stripology. Oh, my stripology. Do you want me to get rid of the yes, block? Yes, that'd be lovely. You. Thank you very Let's much. Clear the decks a tiny bit. Thank you very much. Um, now, these aren't just for cutting strips, and they are phenomenal for cutting strips. Yeah, they, they um, really and are. actually, a little tip when you're cutting yours into strips I don't know, instead of cutting the whole strip at a time, yeah. um, because they, it is a printed panel, I made sure that I folded it, so I folded it. Um, like width of fabric and then cut how long it needed to be mm -hmm. and then I found I could cut it but just be really careful that you make sure they are exactly the right size fair enough otherwise they won't fit yeah now when you're trimming something to size if you have a center block utilize it mm -hmm. because what and I have trimmed this one that you will see mm -hmm. but when I've done it I've made sure oh I can see yes see look, I just put that on I've made sure that this center block is absolutely center yes so I haven't thought oh well I'll line it up against that because mm -hmm. that would be out mm -hmm. so I made sure that I trimmed exactly the same off I like that each, it doesn't matter if you don't no one's going to notice but, but the but more registration yes. lines you have it's helpful isn't yes, it yes definitely right so what we're going to do we're going to put I want a a, one of these and one of these together. Yep. Perfect. I want them. This. I do want those in a minute, so don't. Oh no! Either. I should keep them nearby. Now, the first Talk thing. Of stealing Wendy's blocks. <laughs> hey, you put Wendy's blocks down. It's like Pauline's pens. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just. Does it say that on your block keeper? Does it say Wendy's blocks? I'm gonna, hands off. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it. I'm going to use my Cricut machine and put that on. Do it. <laughs> um, so I do tell you to cut them the size. That sounded awful to, to cut them the size, but you, do you know what? If you cut them a little bit, I'd bigger, go a little bit over fine. and then trim. Well, them. see, I'm oh, I'm of the school that if you need it to be eleven inches, you make that block fit your yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but this way, then that's fine. So we're going to now join these two together. So what we do is we put right side facing up strip on here at the back and line that up. And then we get, I'll just cut this roughly to size. And then you want double the width of the back strip for the front. 
and we put the raw edges on there. Now, the sizes for these. Oh, so, hang on, just let me get oh, my head round. Oh, 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 <coughs> now, oh, now I've thrown so on you, haven't the back, I? This is a raw edge, single layer strip, yep. but on the top, this is a folded layer and Wrong it's double. Wrong sides together. Wrong sides together, a bit Wrong like a binding it strip. It is, definitely. And you're going to line that up so that we've actually got two raw edges and the quilt sandwich and then a single strip of fabric at the back. Yes. That all makes sense. And right. the strip on the back, you said, is right side facing up or wrong side facing up? Well, because the back of the quilt is the right side of fabric, yeah. you need right side facing. I understand. So it's right side, right facing, side facing, yes. Right side facing the fabric. Now, what I do like gotcha. to do as well is take out my trusty and don't worry about the yellow or if you've got a blue one it doesn't matter they're all different colors they do exactly the same thing this is a glue stick this is a glue stick and um, the sew line and i have just got lots of refills because i've run out um so you want to put this one on it's a great tip it is <laughs> but the trouble is in the studio the, the lights are rather hot so it they, dry the, they do they it dry may it not it may not stick there we go and then on the front now, if you have cut them to size, then what you would do is you'd secure the end first, then the middle, and then the bits in between. Oh, oh I like it. I've missed you. I've missed you too. I've missed you more. Now, while you're doing that then, sir, I'm just going to go to white because I would, um, I would have the thread now the colour of your back fabric. Yeah. So that's yeah. what, yes, because I'll show you in a moment why that's important love this method love this method it's really clever and it's so effective well i i just i just really struggled and and i don't let anything beat me because no. i you know what i'm like in fact i'm in in crochet i'm a troubleshooter so people are saying what they've done wrong and how can i fix it i like doing things sure. like that but I would... I, I, well, this is a solution to a problem for is, an awful lot it of is. patchworkers and quilters. But I'm not proud of myself. Mm. I did used to have tantrum, like a little tantrum. We've all been there. Oh, I know, I know. We've right. all been there. We've all thrown the quilt top in the corner of the room, haven't we, and stomped out. Oh, and yes. We've been upset, actually, because we've spent lots of money, lots of time, lots of energy. And, that's a and thing, then we don't know how it? to finish money it. Money is, is precious to us. And yeah. when you've spent a considerable amount making a topper, yeah. and then... It, it goes yeah you want to use it and it has to be a quilt yeah. yes so you're going to stitch through so all those layers i now. am now i am stitching a quarter inch seam okay and i've increased it to 2.4 so the stitch length's a bit longer because i know that this will accommodate it but i've got one two three four five layers i'm yeah. going through yeah there. fair enough because um, i don't want it to pull so if you've got a machine with integrated dual feed, this would be a great time to use it. Yes, in fact. Because it feeds yeah. nicely, doesn't so it? So I, I will do as I'm told and bring it down. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant, you know, because like, some machines will go through all those layers and they won't wrinkle. But I mean, if, you could use a walking foot, but just be aware that a walking foot doesn't necessarily give you a quarter of an inch. That's the thing. So, yeah. and, and you do need that quarter of an inch because everything has been calculated to a quarter of an inch. You could always put a bit of masking tape on the bed of your sewing machine or a bit of uh, washi tape to show you where the quarter inch and then line it up there to do this. And then Because I do try and follow foot. it on there because it has yeah. got a quarter of an inch, but that mean I would have to have my needle set in the centre yeah. and use that. But I, I get a bit side a bit sidetracked. And then we're going to on with that. Wow. And then I'm going to trim this off flush so this you to the edge. Flush to the edge. Yes. Got you right. Because we're going to add one to it. Well, if this isn't the right size, then it's a bit of guesswork, isn't it? Well, and you we don't, don't want it wonky. We don't want it wonky. Don't want it wonky. Sue. Don't oh, want it wonky. Sue. Uh, Rebecca Harrison's mum. Oh. Morning, Sue. Sorry, you're a person in your own right, Sue. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Stuart, she says. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. I met Sue at Festival of Quilts. Oh. I had the best time at Festival of you Quilts. You can't help I yourself, can you? I could do this you? with you, you see. <laughs> um, I just throw it on the floor. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, did you come to Festival I did. of Quilt? I, yeah, I kind of, of like bulldozed, did. didn't I? I was like, did, yes, yeah. there's Stuart. Wasn't it lovely? It was, it was amazing. It was, so what and do you it was do so now? humbling to see everyone that buys our things and makes For our six things. Six minutes. Right. So now what we do, we're going to put this back one, we're going to secure this right sides together. Now, the easiest way to do that is turn this one over like that and then 
wiggly jiggly this yeah. one over and then you've got right sides together now i'm going to just go for it because we've only got six so minutes this is, the, this is that single strip of fabric this is the single layer the of fabric Fablic, fablic. <laughs> and it's raw edge of that fabric to the raw yes. edge of the back of yes. the second so block. It, so if I show that again, you've got yep. the, the back of the block here, yep. and then you've got the right side against right side. Got so it. right sides are always going to be against right side. Now, this one will try and throw you off because you're stitching close to the, the fold. So just be firm and don't let it throw you off. Mm -hmm. Now I put my foot over the top of the fabric, but you could slip it under as you're going along, but I've put it over the top. But you know what? If it throws you off, just stop and go back over it again. Okay. That's the, that's the only thing because we're working through quite a few layers here. Yeah. Now this is where the magic happens because now, could right. it be magic? Could now, when. Oh, look! You, look at her look! Uh, excuse that me, could you do a little bit of ironing for me, please, sir? Yeah, of course Thank I will. you. Where have you put the ironing? Just behind you. Where have you put the ironing board? Where have I put the ironing board? <laughs> yeah, where did you put it? <laughs> oh, how neat. Exactly, yes. Now, how neat. The, the quilters out there will have already, you know, and we're talking about the quilters that have done this for years and years and years and years. Well, Look, well, they butt already... up exactly. <laughs> they do, don't it's they? Lovely. Yeah, they perfect. Do. Um, we'll know that actually when I fold this over, yep. this is going to be wider than the back. Now, yep. ideally, you'd want them the same. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is all about learning the technique, mm -hmm. getting people mm -hmm. at their machines, yep. getting them sewing. Agreed. And I don't want any upside down faces. No, agreed. Which you may get if you've got that thinner and you're stitching through it and you don't quite catch that right yeah then it doesn't look very nice understood alternatively what you can do is you can hand stitch this and then you won't see anything on the back right but i say go for it on the yeah machine. yeah absolutely so we're going to machine yes. so closer do you yes. want me to press that yes please sir thank you very much you can come again thank you <laughs> <laughs> well, I can stay. Oh, I, I did okay, ask upstairs. I feel like I've done my probationary <laughs> period now, and I think I'm allowed to stay. Oh, that's good. I and, think so. and again, um, because we're tight for time, make sure that you pin that really well. Mm -hmm. And I, I have said to stitch down at both sides, so from the front yeah. it looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it to look the yes, same, don't you? Yes, you do. And I've increased my stitch length to three mm -hmm. because we've already sewn the seam this is now holding this in place yeah and i don't want the fabric to to stretch or no. or buckle this under is, and this is our quilting now oh, as well isn't yes it, it on is on our on our sashing strips yes it definitely is now i've only done one side because I actually like it on here, which means then I've got a strip here, but because I've done, I've got a, a line of stitching, because I've done the same colour as my backing, mm. you don't see that. Now, if I now go and do one this side, it is going to put another line of stitching here. And I quite like the fact that hasn't got any. Fair enough. But, so that's what I would do. So, so that's the basic technique. And then you awesome. add your next one yep. and your next one. And your next one and then presumably along the long edge is exactly the same. the same it's, it's just a long folded yes. strip on the top yes and a long exactly the same okay. but when you're putting them together make sure that you just open it out to check that they're running in line yeah. so that you get when you put this yeah. one here make sure that those run in line yeah and no wonky donkey pin those first mm -hmm. because if you need to make any adjustments no one's going to see you trimming a little bit off the end True. here but they will if you start here and then you've yeah. gone a little bit wonky yeah so put these two in first and then let the outside now really with good the, with the the thicker sashing the wider sashing it's exactly the same exactly the same process but when you fold that center one open you're going to be left with a gap in between yeah, a gap. so all you do is trim your wadding and place it in that gap so you put like a thin strip of wadding in the instructions it tells you how to calculate what you need because obviously Perfect. you've got a bit folded up then folded back yep. so it's not the same size as the strip no but there is a calculation that you do so that you know how much you do um, don't go too wide with it because otherwise it's going to be the size of a block yeah but if you do anything over four inches 
put a line of stitching down it because yeah, yeah, yeah. then just quilt that center yeah. and that will look amazing. Yeah. But then that's all you do. Love it. I love it. What a great technique. Love Every it. quilter needs that tool yeah. kit in their toolbox. Now the most popular colorway of the kit has been da -da, pastels, pastels. Mm. Uh, 49.99 this gives you enough fabric to create the front and the backing and the binding the whole quilt just add batting and thread and that's it it was also a brights version so same look but instead of the pastel rainbow you've got the bright rainbow if you've got that gorgeous cushion i have i just want to show this yeah. off absolutely gorgeous isn't it and this is the brights and actually, of course, if you bought both kits, you could combine the two and you could have pastels and brights and make a big quilt. That's what I would do if it was me. me but of course, you can you can make it that size and then think, well, no, you can try to make it that size and think, oh, we need to add some more on. Of course, and you, you can, can do that. And you can, you can do that. Cool as you go. Yes. Wendy, thanks for that oh, no. first hour. Yeah. Uh, you have an hour break now. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and I will see you guys after the break. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harbour. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes, it's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street. You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans on Facebook and click join group. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Would you like a badge like this? Not this, no, that's my frying pan from home. But you could have a badge like this. Like this, oh, like this. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so Street Stuart a lot. Uh, because a free, p a free pin badge with all orders while stocks last. T's and C's apply, just so we're clear. Now also, there is a code on the back as well, which you can use in the future, I won't say any more. But also, today, please don't pay for P&P. When you come to check out your basket, in the voucher code box, I want you to put Stuart PP23, all one word, Stuart, PP23, and you'll get free postage and packing. And lots of you have been using that as a reason to top up things like your quilt batting, your backing fabrics, or even just a pack of needles or a pair of quilters gloves. You know, that kind of thing that you might think, I really don't want to pay P&P &P to get a reel of thread or a pack of needles. But because it's free P&P, &P, it does not matter the value of your order. It could be a pound, it could be a thousand pounds. You're gonna get free P&P. &P. You could check out 20 times today. You'll get free P&P &P if you use that code. So please use it. Get yourself a pin badge too. And help me celebrate two glorious years here at Sewing Street. I can't tell you what a joy, what privilege it is to be here. I absolutely love it. It is a privilege, Ben, to work here and to work with you guys. I work with the best bunch ever. I really do. I really do. I'm very proud of my colleagues and what they achieve here and how hard they work. And also, I'm very proud of you for, for coming along on this journey with us. And I met so many people at Festival of Quilts as well. And over the last two years, it's a joy. Right. Go on. Oh, yes. Let's just quickly mention the New Mexico quilt. So the kit's completely sold out. However, we've got the pattern. Details are on screen. Zahida, this is for you. 9.99. The code is KI7705. Thank you. You get the pattern for the quilt and for the cushion. Now, um, okay. Over half of the remaining stock is in baskets. Um, we've got we've got a few, but we haven't got a huge number at all. Um, and if I tell you that four fifths of the stock is spoken for now, well, I mean most of it's gone and sold out. But um, we have got we have got a few. But don't hang about. Don't hang about. Um, you could make this in so many other combinations. I mean, personally, I think it looks really good in solids and, it, and it's a great way of showing off solids. And we do 
about 60 different colours. You could do this all in shades of blue. You could do this all in browns, creams, tans, beiges. That would be beautiful. Shades of grey with a little pop of colour maybe or not. You could do this in brights with a black background. You could use a soft grey background and more pastel shades. Um, you could create this using you know um patterned fabric so for example what about using batiks you could use batiks and you could use a solid for the background you could use you know kind of um, tone on tone fabrics like little ditzy prints as well there are also opportunities to do a bit of fussy cutting or feature a few like print prints so for example in these squares and in these sashing squares you could have something that was a little bit more you know a bolder print there and there's no reason why you have to do these paper pieced setting triangles i showed you this morning how easy it is to make them but also in the instructions i show you or tell you how to substitute them for just plain squares uh, plain triangles rather you could do plain cream but you could also use a feature print and put it in these triangles and maybe in the center squares and in the sashing squares to you know to bring it to life so you could maybe use a kaif bold print and then pick out solids from that print for all of your piecing and that would look, now I've given myself a job. <laughs> now I've given myself a job because now I want to make that quilt too. It would also look absolutely beautiful in something like a French general where you've got all those lovely kind of russet, red, deep pink tones and they're quite small prints. They'd look stunning done in this design. Loads and loads of options. Um, all right. Ah, we're getting to the stage where we've got everything in baskets that we've got left. So please check out your basket. Um, yeah, I think we're getting to the stage where we're going to be over allocating. So please check out your basket. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for supporting the work that I do because I, you know, I, I, I'm the first to admit I live an absolute dream. I have my dream job, but the only way I can do my dream job is if what I do you know, kind of pleases you and you like what I do because that's why I keep coming back. <laughs> so that's how you get rid of me. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Let's do that. This hour. Um, oh, Viv says I'm trying to buy with free PMP. It's not letting me. Viv, just check what you're putting in. Are you spelling my name right? It's S T U A R T P P two three and it's all in capitals have another go if you have any problems viv i want you to give the call center a ring they'll sort it for you you will not pay pmp today my love not on my watch not on my second anniversary right time for some panels can we do go on yep oh can we start with the fox now i want to start with the fox what does the fox say is it? Oh, it's like a scream, isn't it? They always have it in uh, Midsummer Murders. It's never a good sign, is it? Someone's walking home late at night from the pub in a little village, and then you hear it, and I think, oh, doomed, doomed. This is lush. Look at that. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know what? You could use these panels for quilt as you go. You could layer that, you could quilt that, you could do four or nine of these and join them together. That would be stunning. This is a great price too, £2.99 for each of these panels. I'll whiz through them, but just to let you know, they're all 18 inches square. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that, it's almost like um, watercolour painting. And it's on like a sort of little bit, almost cotton canvas look cotton canvas look that is gorgeous i love that i love that that's the fox now next up let's do the bear let's do the bear look at that that's not a fabric panel that's a napkin all ready for when we have cake ben you silly boy you silly billy right let's do the blue tit Oh, the blue tit that's lovely 
really pretty. Again, 18 inches square. It's this gorgeous, almost linen-like texture to the fabric. I suspect it's a cotton poly mix, the actual fabric, but that's gorgeous. You could cross hatch quilt that, just like Wendy taught us in the last hour. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Really pretty that. These would make lovely cushions. They'd make lovely bag panels, but you could also make them into a quilt and I would use that quilt as you go technique. Let's do the elephant next. The tones in this are beautiful. It's almost sepia, isn't it? It's almost sepia. Like an edging, what colour? Um, I, ooh, uh, I personally, I think I would go with something like, um, no, paprika or terracotta. There's just a little bit of terracotta here. I might just bring that out. <clears throat> but you could do it in a deep uh, brown. A deep brown, that would be a really nice brunette. That would work. This is an African elephant, Charlie, and how do we know that? Because of the ears? Because they're big? Oh, smaller ears for an Asian elephant and large ears for an African. Oh, the tusks. The tusks are a bit different. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Ben. Welcome. Gorgeous. Just a little slurp. Right, we'll do the giraffe next. Did you see, I think it was this week, there was a little baby giraffe born that hasn't got any spots? It's all like a caramel brown, like the colour of a teddy bear. It's so sweet. And I think it's the only one in the world. Um, this is the giraffe. Oh, I love that. 2 99 for each of these. Fab, aren't they? 18 inches square, like a linen textured fabric. Absolutely gorgeous. I like the way it's kind of a bit like sort of... <laughs> really cute, really cute. You could practice free motion quilting around, creating a bit of texture there. Or you could cross hatch, you could do straight lines. Really nice opportunity to practice your quilting. If you make and sell, up to 99 and it's the front of a bag or it's the front of a cushion, very, very well priced. Now, next up, we have got, is this a leopard? Yes, the leopard. Just wanted to check it wasn't a jaguar. The, le the leopard. Oh, when I was a child in Tewkesbury, the baker's was called Leopold's. Yes, Leopold's. And oh, it was a gorgeous bakery, Leopold's Bakery. And mum used to take us in there all the time for a little treat. And my favourite thing that they did in there was they did Dougal meringues. You remember Dougal from the Magic Roundabout? And it was a meringue, but it, was, it had the ears and the face and everything piped on with cream in the middle. It was a Dougal meringue. So, oh my goodness, if we were really good, we got a Dougal meringue from Leopold's Bakery. Uh, this isn't a Leopold, this is a Leopard, also known as a leopard. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. I love the colours. I love the fact that it's almost photographic, but it's kind of watercolour painted style. Now, what about wild horses? There we go. Go. It's like um like a new forest pony, isn't it? I'm white horses, ba ba da ba dum, ba da bum ba ba da ba ba da. Do you remember that on White Horses? Oh, I used to love that. And ba 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 da ba da ba da ba ba ba. That was Black Beauty. Black Beauty. Oh. That's taken me straight back to childhood. 
<laughs> Lovely. But so many people are into horses, aren't they? No. Wild horses in Sutton Coalfield. That's amazing. Nay, I don't believe it. <laughs> oh. My dad was the most amazing horse rider. Absolutely incredible. Mm. Yeah, oh, I love riding. Yeah, yeah, love it. Uh, just a minute. Where's the animal? Where's the animal? Lavender's not an animal, but it is lovely. <laughs> oh, Sahida so says, I can't find your Mexican quilt on the website. Oh, gosh, Sahida, so you are having a, 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 a bit of a challenge today. Let's, can we find it on the website and show? Can we look at the, to the website, to the website. Sahida, so right. So get to the main page, click on Watch Live. Oh, we're on Watch Live now. And then scroll down. Oh, hello. And then scroll down. There's the pattern. There's the pattern. It's right at the top. It's right at the top. Today's bestseller. The New Mexico Quilt Instructions, 9.99. That might be why you can't find it, Zahida, because you're whizzing straight past the very top. It's there. Zahida, let me know you found it. Let me know you found it. Lavender, gorgeous. Do you know what I would do? I'll tell you what I would do. I would make this up into a cushion, but on the back of the cushion, I would put a pocket with a little flap with a press stud on, and I would put a sachet of dried lavender in the back of the cushion that you can take out and refresh, and you can also wash the cushion. Yeah? That will, oh, that would be beautiful. And then you could put a little bit of maybe broderie on clay or a bit of lace trim around the outside of the cushion. They're, oh, beautiful. That'd be lovely. Oh, I'd back it either with um, a nice soft green. You could use an ivory or you could use a really nice lavender or lilac. Yeah, light purple, something like that. Be beautiful. Gorgeous. A message. Ladybug on the lavender. Look closely. Are you kidding me? Is there? You're kidding me, aren't you? No, it's so small, I can't even see it. There is not. Look closely, look closely. You're having a laugh. You teaser, you. <laughs> right. National Gallery, the National Gallery. Let's get a little bit cultured, shall we? I'm a, I'm a bit of a culture vulture. I like a little bit of culture. I want to start with Monet. I am quite literally now going to show you the Monet. There you go. I'm here all week. Try the veal. Look at this. So these are, this is done in conjunction with the National Gallery. So these have been authorised by the National Gallery. And this is, which one have I picked? This is uh, Bathers at La Grenouillière. Oh, why did I pick that one? Why didn't I just go Lily Pond? There we go. There we go. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. They're big as well, aren't they? Yep, so 90 centimetres by the width of fabric. Absolutely stunning. Now you could literally just layer that, quilt it and bind it. And if you didn't want, um, if you didn't want to put, have a physical binding that you could see, what you can do is you can do a single fold binding and then pull the whole binding right to the back rather than fold it back so there's an edge showing you can actually turn it back like a facing like a facing uh sue says thank you for the white horses song earworm can't stop singing it you are welcome <laughs> I think it's a good time to be had by all on white horses. Ba, da, ba, da, ba. Now, this is the one. Now, wait a minute. Where's the I want to show you the lily pond. 
Um, no, that's Summer's Day. Monet. Water Lily Pond. There it is. This is gorgeous. I want to show you this one. It's been the most popular on pre-order too. Um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there it is. There it is. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? And you could even, you don't even have to quilt it. You could put that onto a frame. You could, you could either make a frame or get an artist's frame, stretch this over it and staple it to the back and have it on the wall. That would be lovely. You could also go in there with embroidery. You could put French knots. You could do, you know, hand stitch details on that. That would be, oh, it's gorgeous. They're very, very good reproductions, aren't they? Very, very good quality indeed. Oh, Margaret says that a uh, paint, painted pony complements your quilt beautifully. Stuart, oh, thank you. That's a, yeah, I like that. That's a really nice idea. It would, and it sort of fits the theme as well a little bit, doesn't it? Right, the next one is from Cezanne. This is the Avenue at Chantilly. The Avenue at Chantilly. Do you want me to open them all up or do you want to just have a look on the back? That's lovely, isn't it? Joanne says, oh, Stuart, it was folly foot for me. I'm singing The Lightning Tree. Great show. I don't think I ever saw that. Catherine says, morning, Stuart. I have one of these panels. I'm going to make some cushions. What fabric do you suggest I use for the backing? Good question. Uh, I, Osnaberg would be nice because it's almost like an artist's canvas fabric, isn't it? And that would be quite a nice sort of, quite like that combination. Or calico, that would be nice as well, because that has a similar look. Or you could use a toning solid. So you could pick out really any of the colours that please you and use them on the back. Yeah, either of them. If you're going to use these for cushions, I'd definitely put some H630, H640 or quilt batting behind them. And even if you don't quilt them, just sew around the outside edge, just so they've got that little bit of padding. I think they look nicer than literally putting them straight against your cushion insert. That would be my top tip. Right. Next up, I've got Morisot. Morisot. Oh, lovely. This is a detail from Summer's Day. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous, isn't it? These are all impressionistic, aren't they? And this was about 1879. Painted about 1879. Gosh, none of these painters lived that long, did they? 1841 to 1895, so he was, what, 54? Mm. And then the last one I've got is a detail from Irises by Claude Monet. Sue says, here's an oldie for you. Does anyone remember the singing, ringing tree? I don't. I don't. But I bet some of our viewers might. I don't. The singing ringing tree. I can just about remember the hair bear bunch. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Right, that's those. Lovely. Can we do the Japanese? No. Can I? Oh. Don't say no to me, Ben. Not on my anniversary. <laughs> right. First one. I don't know if these have got labels on them. No, they haven't. Oh, these are absolutely gorgeous. And these are properly, these are made in Japan, aren't they? These, the, oh, these are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Look at these. Look at these. It's like um, like a denim sort of texture almost. I mean, it's um, like a woven, almost like a linen-y fabric. Gorgeous. Yeah, really like these. You could literally just 
fold and hem the edge all the way around and then just get like a little wooden dowel across the top and along the bottom and hang it up maybe with some cord tassels hanging off that that's stunning absolutely lovely absolutely lovely oh thank you beverly she's she's linked us to the folly foot theme tune i shall listen to it later um yeah i think in japan um what people do is hang three of these in a doorway don't they it's almost like a screen to go through but you have three of them hanging in a doorway very very nice very nice and these are properly proper from Japan these gorgeous so that's the first one 1999 they really are something a bit special really gorgeous yeah love them love them uh this next one has got cats on it oh oh that's really lovely that's really lovely that would be so much fun to quilt and embellish don't forget as well that if you wanted to you could very very easily cut that down and actually use that as the front and back of a bag you could turn that into a bag and I might mix that with a little bit of maybe a denim or something like that or a toning fabric to go with but maybe denim or Osnaberg again would look good very very inspiring that and look at all this lovely fine Norin yeah Norin they are called Norin fabric dividers, aren't they? And these are Norin panels. These are specifically made to hang in doorways. But of course, they look great on walls as wall hangings. You could also use it as the centre panel or feature panel within a quilt. You could add piecing around the outside. You could add some sashiko. delightful a few of these they're all 19.99 <clears throat> now this next one's got they're either butterflies or moths butterflies um wouldn't these be great for table runners you could literally straighten up the sides layer it and quilt it and you're done that's elegant another thing you could do what about using that in the, the centre back of a quilted jacket or you could buy three panels or two panels have that on the back of the uh, jacket and then have another partial down either the left or the right front and I'd probably mix that with some different um, Japanese indigo fabrics or shibori style fabrics you could make a really beautiful quilted jacket out of these nice feature aren't they uh, next up, this one features an elegant lady, an elegant lady with these beautiful blossoms. Oh, that's great. Now look, you've got your blossoms up there and then your beautiful elegant lady with the flowers. These are, I think, probably peonies. And then look here with this almost like sort of Sashko style. Oh, I could do so many things with these. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think uh, they'd fit in so many interiors. Yeah, very, very special. This last one must be the Christmas tree. This is nice. Oh, I like that. It's a bit different. I like how this is all like sort of almost like it's been made from different pieces of fabric sort of applique but it's all printed so you could have great fun quilting around and I would definitely I would use that as either a, a wall hanging or as a table runner imagine that on the sort of Christmas Eve table with the buffet around it and you could use some gold metallic thread when you were quilting it 
don't forget everybody, today it is free P&P. Do not pay for your P&P, I insist. You need to use Stuart PP23, no spaces, all capitals in the voucher code when you check out. Stuart PP23, all one word, no spaces. And you'll get free postage and packing. If you have any problems, ring the call center. Also, while stocks last, you will be getting yourself a Sewing Street Stuart Hillard pin badge. I've got one. I have. Have you? <laughs> You'll get the pin badge while the stocks last. While the stocks last. <laughs> okay, and also there is a little, there's a little something on the back as well for you. Right. Um... Can we? Let me have a look. What have I got here? Well, these look... Oh, 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 I want this one. I want this one. I worked with a panel from this same artist, actually, before. This is Ira Kennedy, um, who's an American artist. And he paints, yeah. He paints... Look at that. Look at that. Now that... I did, I did one which was sunflowers... Pretty, very Van Gogh inspired, aren't they? It's like sort of Van Gogh travelled to Australia and learned from the indigenous people there with the sort of dot painting techniques and sort of combined everything together. Aren't they stunning? Absolutely stunning that. And you could pick out solids, batiks, even maybe a bit of kaif to add borders to this. Stunning, isn't it? Or what about cutting it up into squares or rectangles and then piecing it together with some sashings, maybe um, attic window style, yeah? And put a framework over the top. Love that. God, that's a good price. Fourteen ninety nine. That's a really good price. It's a big panel. You could also use that as a very, very beautiful backing for a quilt, couldn't you? If you wanted, you know, a party on the back. Me too. Now this next one, ooh, ooh, this is, oh, this is a Delphine Brooks with Lewis and Irene. Ah, oh, look. How have we got any of these left? It's the cow. We've got single figures. Oh, look. Look at this, Daisy the cow. If I just show you in the corner, just to show you what you're going to end up making, there's Daisy the cow once she's all made up. Oh, that's fabulous. That's amazing. Look at that. And there's your outline. So you've got your outline and then you're going to use these fabrics. Um, iron on, into, you know, um, bond web and then stitch around, layer it, quilt it. Yeah. Fab. Daisy the cow. Daisy the cow. Uh, what else have I got here? This looks cool. Oh, this is the sunflowers. Is it? I th oh no, it's the chair. It's the chair. This is Van Gogh's chair. There we go. Vincent. Is that his pipe on the chair? It's a very poign it's a very poignant image though, isn't it? Of an empty chair. Makes you think all sorts. Starry, starry night. Oh, I love that song. Vincent. It's a gorgeous song though, isn't it? Next up, is this a little sewing panel I spy? Yes, it is. I do, well, anything sewing themed, I'm there for it. It, I think it is Le Boutique. Oh, yes, this is lovely. Look, so you've got different 
So you can use this separate all together. So you've got, this is lovely. You've got your very chic dresses. This is very, Mrs. Harris went to Paris, isn't it? So you've got those, and then you've got uh, La Boutique, La Boutique. And then you've got two more dresses with beautiful handbags and shoes. Mrs. Harris went to Le Boutique. You could cut that apart though, couldn't you? And you could turn that into a, a bigger quilt because you could have the main image in the centre. You could have the four dresses at the corners or down one side maybe and across the bottom. And then you could maybe do some piecing or plain borders, something like that. Loads you could do with that. Very, very nice. Now then, next up, I've got... Uh, oh, there's another one. This is another... I think this might be from a, the same range. I think it is. This is a stripe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely want to use this with it. So this is your border. This is by the half metre, or is this a panel? So this is a panel. Well, that's fab. I tell you what I'd do with this. You could either cut out strips and use them as border strips or you could cut out tall triangles and then you could piece them together in a kaleidoscope. That would be fun. And I would use um, maybe some coordinating solids to create, yeah, kaleidoscope blocks. Because what you've got is lots of repeats of the same images which you could combine, you could fussy cut. Nice, very nice. Gosh, loads of lovely panels. Um, let's do something that's a bit different. I've got, oh, actually, and I've still got some fabrics, sewing themed fabrics, I think probably from that range. So I'm just gonna grab those. Yeah. So this is the one that's like all over with dresses. So if you wanted to use either of those panels and combine them, this is by the half meter. 749 and a half meter you could use this for your backing um limited stock limited stock on these you've also got loads of images that you could fussy cut re-piece back together you could use for epp thank you yeah love the background too little bit timmy ho don't you think it's a bit tim holtz it's a little bit Tim Holtz, that background. You could combine that with some of his Eclectic Elements fabrics and that would look rather delish. Um, what about any old iron, any old iron? Turning the humble iron into something of beauty. I think you'll find. I'm getting a bit chilly in here now. I was too warm earlier on. I was really warm earlier on and now I'm a bit... Brrr, brrr. I need a quilt round me. <laughs> if only I'd got a quilt. I like this though, look. You've got lovely... These are sort of a bit old-fashioned irons, aren't they? Do you think they're kind of 1950s? 1960s iron? And then reels of thread? Little bobbins. I love that word, bobbin. 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 Oh, bobbin would be a lovely name for a dog or a cat. I think it suits a dog better, doesn't it? Bobbin the dog. Now I want a puppy. I do actually, after yesterday's World Dog Day and all the photographs that got sent in, I went home really wanting a dog. This is lovely. This reminds me of my mum's sewing machine when I was growing up. She had one, except it had gold paint on it and it was a singer. Mm. Aren't they lovely though? They're such an iconic thing. And absolutely, can't, you can't quite believe how revolutionary the electric sewing machine or even the hand turned or the treadle sewing machine must have been when it came out. The speed, I believe, 
when when they were first invented a seam two seamstresses went head to head one on this newfangled sewing machine and one doing it old school side by side just to show how comparable it was mm. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was an instant hit, to be honest. You know, in the same way I remember in the early nineties, machine quilting was was quite sniffed at at shows. Machine quilted quilts didn't rarely won at shows. It, it was if they weren't hand quilted, they were they could quite easily be passed by because machine quilting wasn't proper quilting you know um and then when long arm quilting first came to the fore again long arm quilted quilts again were you know seen as a cheat and that's not proper quilting and you know and now often it shows it's the long arm quilted quilts that win the awards so there's a real you know but still there are fabulous people doing hand quilting and uh, hand guided. Sandra from Lanarkshire has got in touch to say, Stuart, I still use my 1926 Singer treadle machine to make all my stuff. Sandra in sunny Glasgow. Sandra, that's incredible. I love that. I love that. I remember teaching a machine quilting class and someone brought a Singer featherweight that had been adapted to electricity. <gasps> You've never seen such beautiful quality stitching. It was amazing. Lynn from uh, Angus has got in touch to say, Morning Stuart, happy anniversary. Thank you. Uh, I started sewing on my granny's Singer treadle machine when I was five. Well, that's lovely. My mum, when I talk about my mum's machine at home, she had a treadle and then she went to a hand cranked and it had like a wooden base with drawers that slid. There was a compartment that kind of slid open to get to, a little wooden surround. I was fascinated by it, absolutely loved it. And mum used to sew like this. I can still remember the sound of it while she sewed. I remember when I was about three, she made me a Bay City Rollers fancy dress costume. And then she took me to a photographic stu studio in Tewkesbury and had like professional photographs of me dressed as one of the Bay City Rollers. Oh, right. Next one. <laughs> this is lovely. Again, buy the half meter. So this is embroidery scissors, stalk scissors. <clears throat> Uh, Blas got in touch to say second anniversary congrats loving the childhood TV series memories yes tales from around the world the singing ringing tree Bell and Sebastian Robinson Crusoe that was a great thing I used to I tell you one I used to love I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told do you remember that one I have many stories tales for both the young and old that was oh it was lovely Oh, I love that. From my many travels, I have gathered these tales to teach you good sense when all else fails. Oh, yeah, it was great. Isn't it funny how these things stick in your memory? I probably haven't sung that for about 35 years. Ha! Huh. There we go. Right. G Neo Geo. Neo Geo. If you want something really sort of modern and abstract or something as well. Do you know what? I would practice machine quilting because do you see those concentric quarter circles? You could quilt different motifs in each of those. Amazing colours. Amazing colours. Right. And what was that? Twelve ninety nine. I think that would be a great thing to layer up and actually practice your quilting on. Thank you. <clears throat> OK. Now, some more fabrics by the half metre. And these would go so beautifully with our art panels from the National Gallery. You could use these to create lovely bags, cushions, 
and we've also got some natural seeded cotton canvas any of these would work really nicely with our national gallery panels so why don't we start with that natural seeded cotton canvas because we were talking earlier on about what fabric would you put on the back and this is absolutely gorgeous um, it would also be really nice to embroider on to quilt on it's lush that is 56 inches wide half a meter really good value 5.99 that's fab that is fab actually you could paint or draw on that you could dye that be great as a backing for um some cushions it is lovely ben i think you want to have a little look at that that's really nice fabric a couple of meters in the boot of my car thank you right next up let's do ending 5.8 It is a bit climped like, isn't it? Impressionistic. Ah, oh, Sue, this is a lovely story. She says, we were so poor when I married, I couldn't afford ready-made curtains. Well, I know that feeling. That's what got me, a, I've got a sewing machine to do curtains because I couldn't believe the price. Um, a trip to the rag market in Birmingham, same here. And I dug out my nan's hand crank machine from 1936, got a Reader's Digest book out of the library, no doubt, and taught myself to sew. Sue, I adore that. That's fabulous. Um, you know, those skills, they last you a lifetime, don't they? They really do. No, I remember the eye-watering price of ready-made curtains, especially the ones I wanted. You know, I wanted nice ones and they just cost a fortune. I mean, you can spend hundreds of pounds now, can't you, on like a Roman blind, something like that. And you can make it. It's a metre, metre and a half of fabric and some lining fabric, you know? gorgeous love that love that if you do you remember was it well we've got a panel actually let me just wait there a moment i don't know if this is a delphine brooks the pop is i'm just thinking yeah you could combine couldn't you it's upside down forgive me but you know Oh, this is a Gustav Klimt. Oh, I thought it was inspired by, but yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So that's that half a metre. Next one, this is ending 9-7. This has got to be Monet. Oh, this is Klimt too. Oh, they're all Klimt. Okay, lovely. I love the colour as well. So intense, isn't it? And vibrant yeah lovely um this one n74 any of these I would love pairs pairs of what pairs pairs Gorgeous, love that. And then the last one ends 5 1. Oh, that's nice. Now that reminds me of um, you, Berries. You, Berries. 5 99 Gorgeous absolutely gorgeous right i'm just going to grab out that delphine brooks panel because i did think that that was rather lovely and you could combine it with those fabrics i've just shown you so this is the poppy cushion front and back now of course it is almost september and before you know it it will be remembrance sunday and of course lots of us make special projects don't we for Remembrance Sunday 
And this, I think, is absolutely lovely. I think this was from last year, wasn't it? Really beautiful, really beautiful. Now, I love that you've got a space there where you could put a dedication or you could put a um, photo transfer with a lovely little frame around, something like that beautiful. You could add stitched embellishments, maybe beads. You've got loads of appliques here. So you could add layered appliques. You've also got some fabric that you could use for the backing. But like I say, I might be inclined to grab one or two of those climped prints to use borders backing maybe. They would fit really nicely. You've made this cushion, haven't you, Charlie? Our director, Charlie. Bless him, he'd been working here, never sewn before, and I think it was probably about three or four months, wasn't it, Charlie? And and he was he was inspired by watching the demos and seeing our expert guests come in, and he said, I want to do some sewing. I want to have a... And he picked it up. He picked it up, and now he's a sewer. I love that. I love that. Oh, I've got one last little bit from the Klimt collection. This is a little panel. And look at the price, two ninety nine. Now remember, this is when the fact that we've got free P and P all day really comes into its own. <clears throat> oh, look! There we go. Here it is. Here it is. It's like sort of. Um, is it like an orchard? Something like that. The trees, under the trees. Oh, rose bushes under the trees, it's called. Rose bushes under the trees. Gorge. Gorge. Right, we've got a couple more things. This is ending 02. Oh, field mice by, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Oh, look. Very colourful mushrooms there. Sue says, I have to say, I have several machines, including an industrial, and still my nan's machine does the very best straight stitch. I, yeah, I don't doubt it. I must admit, when the lady came to my quilting class with the, you know, like 100-year-old singer, I thought, ooh, ooh. I was a bit worried that she wasn't going to be able to, you know, that it wasn't going to... Oh my goodness, we all wanted to buy the machine off her within about an hour. The stitching was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, our modern sewing machines are incredible and they do do an awful lot more, but you can't knock the quality of, of those old machines. They are amazing, yeah, and they, and they last, they last. I've had so many people come to my classes over the years, so many ladies who've brought their 18th birthday present or their 21st birthday present. And it's a, you know, Frista Rossman sewing machine or a, um, a Janome, you know, and it was, and it's absolutely fantastic, still working beautifully. Right, this next uh, panel is celebratory cakes. And I think, Ben, do you know, I mean, talk about a hint talk about a hint uh, for after the break but look at that absolutely gorgeous yeah yeah I don't think I can wait till 12 o'clock beautiful tweets and treats tweets and treats little teapots and then I think it's literally one thing yes and then we're yeah so this is oh this is pretty Oh, I haven't seen this before. This is lovely. They're almost like little old-fashioned handkerchiefs, aren't they? Oh, yeah, these are lovely. Poppy cotton songbird serenade. Oh, they're ever so pretty. And then you've got like, this little, almost like handkerchief border. 
along the bottom. Ah, that's lovely. Like that for eight ninety nine. Gorgeous. Um, don't forget those gorgeous Norin panels. They're my top tip for the hour. They're my favourite thing uh, so far. Also, don't forget if you want to get your pattern for the New Mexico quilt, uh, they're dwindling. They are dwindling. We could well be having a sell out of these. Um, it's my brand new quilt pattern. It's called New Mexico but you could make it in uh, different colors. We've got more in baskets than we have. How many in baskets, Ben? Oh, 128. We do not have anything like 128 left. So please use the break to check out your basket. Remember there is free PMP with code Stuart 23, uh, sorry, Stuart PP 23. That's Stuart with a UA, not an EW. <laughs> And I will see you after the break. Hello, I'm Sandra Rushton and I'm the owner of Santangle. Santangle is a system of art that allows anybody to draw wonderful pieces and creations that you can use, not just for paper craft, but for sewing, for boards, ceramics, anything that you feel that you could actually put something on to enhance how it looks. So I'm delighted that Sewing Street Art invited me to come and show you some of my tips and techniques and hopefully I'm going to be able to show you how you can create wonderful pieces of art and include it maybe in your quilts, your embroidery, your sewing and any of the other projects that you love to do. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Follow Sewing String on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. I might have just had a biscuit, um, but it's my anniversary, Wendy, so, as you As long know. as you haven't had any cake or any, anything no, naughty. No, haven't touched the cake yet, mm. Wendy. That's coming up, though. Mm. <laughs> Tell me what's coming up now. Wendy Orlando's back. I'm back. Hello, you. <laughs> and I will coffeed up and fooded, fooded up. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. And lipstick up. And lipstick up. <laughs> I was just doing this. <laughs> Because normally I do that. My I mum, forgot. My mum trained me well. No, you still got it on your teeth, love. Oh, oh. oh my mum trained me well, you see. Once I didn't tell her and she absolutely did, did, went mad at me. Um, oh, Christine says, happy second anniversary. Gorgeous, Stuart Hillard. Thank you. Uh, Teresa says, and um, says, happy second anniversary, Stuart, from Terry and Christine from Uckfield. Thank you so, That's near so me, much. that is. That's near me. Is it? Mm. Oh, fab. Yeah. Um, Teresa says, oh, loving the show, but I've missed out on the Quilt As You Go instructions. Can you possibly get any more, please? No, we can't, I'm afraid. Not today. Not today, because it's the weekend, but we will get them back. We will get them back. Um, right. Now, this is fab. We are doing something which I absolutely love. This is the Crafty Company foldable tote bag. Uh, this everybody needs. Everybody needs foldable tote bag. Go from this to this, and more importantly, from this to this, right when you need it. Uh, it's a handy tote bag that's quick and easy to make. Fold it up snap it shut put it in your pocket and you'll always have a shopping bag to hand and even more more than that it's designed by wendy orlando <laughs> so we know we're going to get amazing quality detailed instructions look at this absolutely detailed step by that is a very very detailed pattern I, wendy yeah, I, I talk too much in my patterns as I do in real life. We love it. I'd rather give you more because then you can ignore me. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. This is super, isn't it? Nine ninety nine. Now, Wendy, may I ask, would you please demo of course. the bag, please? Just, and can I say what a lovely lining. version in Blue Skies and Nutmeg. We've got kits. We've got kits. Have a little look at this. So this is the, this is the bag itself. So this is, so it's a nice sized tote bag and it's got a it's got a box bottom as well lovely I love you a don't box bottom. have to you don't have to if you don't want to box okay. it but it's nice with the box bottom so you've got your bag and then you also have a little oh listen oh <laughs> very pleasing oh, yeah. uh, again you don't have to do that if you don't want to but it has a little pocket inside because mm -hmm. I like to put things in my pocket yeah for short sure. receipts <laughs> Receipts. Yes, that's a good idea. Mm. Yes. So you just, it's one of those ones that you can just put it in your handbag and then when you need a bag. Now I have so many I've made, mm -hmm. but I always carry two because when you go to the shop, you just don't know. When they go, oh, do you need a bag? I go, 
No thanks. <laughs> and I always <laughs> just go for milk and then come away with about 12 things. Oh, me things. too, me too. Um, so, so I always need two. You, you do your shopping and then when you've finished, you turn it over so that you've got the back and then you fold the straps down and then because of the way the front is made in three sections you use those three sections to fold it into oh, thirds. Oh that's clever. That's oh yes, clever. oh yeah. This, it looks simple but this was the one that made, gave me the most headache because everything has to be precise. Mm -hmm. So you fold it into thirds and then you fold it up a quarter, mm -hmm. down a quarter and in half and then it fits. Perfect. Oh, that's so clever. That is so clever and neat. Absolutely brilliant. And then that'll pop in your pocket or in your and bag. Then, yeah, pocket or your bag. And I've, I've tried to make it as small as I can, but as big as I can, if that Understood. makes sense. Yes, it does. Because I didn't want a bag this size. I wanted a good size tote bag, yeah. but that it folded down to a good, a big enough size, yeah. small enough size to put in my raincoat pocket. Yeah, for sure. Um, just when I go to the shops. It's terrific. Yeah, yeah. absolutely brilliant. You could also take that out. Uh, when you're going for a walk and go conquering oh and i don't mean yes. like conquering a foreign land i'm talking about conquers for conquers your conquer i wouldn't want to put my conquers in it but you could <laughs> you could put conquers in there well, do you know it's i washable. think of course do you know i think john was even going to put his potatoes in there which whoa there you go well, no, you when you go potatoes. shopping to the farmer's market oh yes i do oh, love a farmer's lovely. market yes well i love this time it root vegetables <gasps> or yep. casseroles yummy right so instructions on their own 9.99 okay and then you can use your choice of fabrics and we need um, one meter of fabric for the whole thing but you can split that up into two half meters four fat quarters or if you get five fat quarters then you've got a bit of choice about what goes where with that in mind I've I would sorry I would actually bundles. say yep. that yes you can get it out of a meter but with the fat quarters you really you do need five and you'll see in a moment why oh, okay. because I, I'll show you what I've got left yep. but they're bits rather than I got gotcha. you. If that makes sense gotcha. to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I like, you know, if I can put extra fabric into a project, I will. I, ne I never mind about having <laughs> a bit too. extra. Oh, yes. So the first one is we've called Blue Skies. This is the blues. So you've got, just like Wendy made, you've got that gorgeous check. I designed that actually in memory of my dad because oh, he had so a shirt lovely. that was really quite similar to that. So then you've got blues with chickens and their little eggs, because of course you know I, I keep chickens. <laughs> then there's that beautiful blue floral. Then you've got little woven eggs in blues and chocolate brown and gold. And then you've got a gorgeous sort of candy stripe. There you're five and you get a fat quarter of each fabric plus your pattern for $22.99. Well, it means that you're paying um, £13 for your five fat quarters, That's which a, is a metre and a quarter. That is good. Yeah. That is very good yeah. for you. Wow. And mm. they're beautiful quality fabrics. I insist on the best, of course. And um, they really are, and I would say that because did you I enjoy if, working with I them? loved working with them. Absolutely oh, loved you. working with them. I loved it. Now I've also got a nutmeg version. I mean, they do work really well all together as well, of course. So in your nutmeg version, you have got the pattern, and then you've got a gorgeous plaid with tans and a little bit of blue a little bit of mustard you've got the chickens and the eggs but which came first Ooh. in nutmeg you've got the mustard floral you've got the blended uh, spot and then you've got the ticking stripe so again just a really cute combination and of course you can mix and match these to create different looks you could do patchwork you can strip piece them together use wendy's pattern as a base couldn't you absolutely 
Now, um, before we get into demo, we do also have some fabric bundles available as well. If you missed out on Blue Skies and Nutmeg when we launched it, I've got some bundles now. Now, um, if you want fat quarters on their own, we don't have the Blue Skies bundle, I'm afraid. That's sold out. The only way to get it is in the kit with the pattern. But we do have Nutmeg on its own. So you get five fat quarters, $13.99. So actually, if you buy the kit, yep. you're actually saving a pound. <laughs> you're actually saving a pound. And I cannot stress the quality of the fabrics. They are gorgeous. Oh, they thank are. you. But I knew they would be. I knew they would be with you. And all of the stripes are yarn dyed woven stripes. Mm. So they look the same on both sides. They're not printed. Yes, thank you for that. I did have trouble working out which was the right side because they both look that. fabulous. Yeah. Helen says, hi, Stu. Are your fabrics available by the half metre? I fancy a dress out of the striped fabric. I'm really sorry, Helen, but they're not, I'm afraid, not from Sewing Street. Um, I know, I'm sorry about that, but yeah, so, because they are perfect for dressmaking. You could make children's clothes out of them for sure. I've got some metre bundles, one metre of each, and that would be fine for children's clothes. Right, so those are the fat quarters. Now, I've also got the half metres, the half metres. So, here are the blue half metres. So, you've got your stripe. You've got your woven eggs, you've got your floral, your chickens and your eggs, and you've got dad's plaid. <laughs> I love that. Oh. I love that. There we go. Those are your five, and you get half a metre of each, so two and a half metres in total for twenty-six ninety-nine. The price yeah. is phenomenal. Thank you. So that's the blue, blue skies. And then we've also got the nutmeg collection in half meters. So dad's plaid, chickens and eggs, mustard floral, blended spots, and ticking stripe, because I love a ticking stripe, Wendy. Me too, me oh, I can't too. Resist. I love I it. I can't resist. Okay, there we go. Now then, we've got design roll. So this is pre-cut strips. They're two and a half inches wide. You get 40 in the bundle for 31.99. Why didn't I get sent those? <laughs> you can get sent one of these. You can, we'll, we'll get one to you. Um, you get 40 two and a half inch wide strips and they're cut selvage to selvage. So uh, you get four of each design because there's 10 designs in the range, 40 in total. $32.99. Um, jelly rolls now, Moda jelly rolls, coming up now to about £60 a piece. And this is $31.99. Wow. Just to put it in context. Yeah. Now, I've got a very special full collection, one metre of each. So here it is. Here it is. The full collection done in one meter cuts so you get one meter of every single one of these fabrics so one meter of this fabric would be plenty to do something like a, a cute little top a little shell top something like that for an adult you could also make the little girl's dress I'll show you that in a second some little dungarees Got a few nice little dressmaking things I'll show you quickly. So that's your full collection for $99.99. That means you're paying £9.99 a metre for beautiful quality quilt weight cotton. So look, here's a little dress you could make, like a little pinafore dress, ever so cute. <laughs> and then I've got a couple of things over here I want to show you as well. So... Here's a really simple bag. Now I made this using really just um, one big rectangle of in our form, Bosley in our form. And then I pieced my fabric. So there was a thin strip of the stripe, wide of the chickens, and then a little narrow strip, and then a wide strip. So there isn't a seam on the bottom, and then it sort of repeats on the other side. 
and then I just scooped out the centre with a tea plate and then made it up into a bag with boxed corners and then I just sewed on some faux leather straps. It's ever so easy, ever so easy. Here's a cute little dress on the mannequin. This is a larger, you'd still get that out of a metre, a fabric. That would probably fit a three-year-old, something like that. And then here I've got a cute little messenger bag. And again, either the half meter bundle or the one meter bundle would do that. And then I've got a couple of extras as well. A couple of little zippy bags that Deputy Joan made for me. So again, Boslin our form, boxed bottoms, nice and easy, just showing off the you can ways. never have too many of those. You really can't. No. You really can't. No. And they're so giftable too. So, a bit of inspiration there. That's the one metre collection. Uh, last thing I've got is the charm pack. I've got the charm pack. Oh, that's sold out. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I've got a complimentary solids bundle. This is lush. This is lush. So you've got half a metre of five different solids that have been picked to go with. So that's gold, cream. Oh, we'll tell you in a sec. They match absolutely beautifully. They match absolutely beautifully. Gold vanilla, Copen, brunette and cloud and they do go absolutely beautifully if i just grab that lovely absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so if you were planning on making loads of bags and you wanted to make your fat quarters go further mm -hmm. get yourself a complimentary bundle so that's it that's line. they're all together they're, are they all half five. meters yeah so if it was if it was i yeah <laughs> i would get those and the other half meters of the prints blue skies and nutmeg yep. and then you could make loads of bags you could make them. loads of bags and then you could have the plane would be in you could have the inside plane yeah yeah Lovely. because presumably with your pattern you're going to use your fat quarters for the outer and the lining of mm. the bag so yeah. if you used a plain fabric for the lining yes. you could make double exactly oh we like that we like that a lot okay that's that right wendy and also i have made this one reversible now you do have to turn it out this way to fold it yeah but because I have done a ladder stitch at the bottom, so you can't see my join, mm -hmm. I've actually made this one more of a like uh, a patchworky type. Oh, that's lovely. I really like that version. So there's nothing to stop me when I get my shopping oh, doing no, I it like this. Oh, yeah, I love that. Wendy, 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 let me love come over. I love this one. And then I've got the pocket on Why the outside. Why didn't you show me this I'm before? sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Um, you Isn't know what my brain's gorgeous. like. My brain just goes 100 miles an hour. Um, yes, yeah, so this if you do it this way, then I would put my phone in there. Yeah, you've got your out. Now it's an outer little, pocket. Yes. So when you fold it away, when you, you just need to it, turn it back. you fold it, you have to turn it. Yes, I forgot to say that. But because I did a ladder stitch at the bottom, yeah. you can't see my stitching. No, you can't. That's delicious, Wendy. Yes. And I knew it was you, so I, I did it. it. I really did it, you know, well. <laughs> I know because you've been I'm looking the up. sewing police. <laughs> you are my sewing policeman, you are. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. But love yeah, you it. can make it reversible. But as I say, to actually fold it, you need to turn it out the right way because it's got those thirds and quarters. Understood. And, yes. Wendy, so, would you show me how to make the bag? I will show Thank you. you. Right. Thank you. Um, to your point that you only you do only need a metre if you have two half metres. But if you are, if you've got the fat quarters, then because you do have quite a bit of fabric left over, but mm -hmm. it's pieces. Mm. So that's why you wouldn't be able to only use four Understood. solid fat gotcha. quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and also in the instructions, I have a, a guide how to do it with the 
uh, the half meters. Mm -hmm. So if anyone was to buy the half meters, then you've got the guide there. But with the fat quarters, fat quarters, you do need to be careful before you cut it. Just work out what the measurements you needed yeah. and just work out where it needs to go. Because you'll see here, in this, this one here, the pocket, and I just wanted to show you this one, the pocket here is made, if I show you on this one inside, I'll turn it around. I don't mind folding and unfolding because it's so quick and easy. It is quick I don't and mind easy, isn't it? doing it. You'll see the pocket in the in the centre I did in one fabric because you need to fold it in half. But with this one, I have um, used a different fabric at the bottom to save wasting. To save uh, wasting okay. any fabric. So yeah. I've and now I've got another little design element yeah, because I like that. you can see that I've got two different fabrics yeah. in the pocket. But just take your time before you, when you get the instructions, read the instructions, work out the sizes of the pieces that you need, yeah. and then maybe go and have a cup of tea and read it again. Mm. Because with the fat quarters, you will need to work out where you're cutting it to get the best of your fabric. It's good advice. And with the, the handles, I dedicated actually on both handles, the chickens, the chickens won for the handles ah. uh, because in, if you're using the um, the half meter, you'll yep. have the width of the fabric that you won't have that on the fat quarters. So you do need to join that. Oh, okay. Fair now enough. for me, that works out perfectly because when I joined them, I made sure that the chickens were stood up that side and that side. Uh, Whereas if you cut uh, it across yes, the fabric, yes. one of them are going to be going up the hill yes. and one of them are going to be falling down the hill. True enough. So if you put the join in the middle equally, um, but I liked the way that the chickens went up and down the handle. Now I have made those, they are my normal handles where you get your fabric, you fold it wrong sides together in half, open it out, press the raw edge towards the center, on both sides and then fold it. So you have four layers of strong fabric. So it's, it's a nice strong No interfacing handle. needed. No, you don't need it. Because um, someone did ask last time that can I um, wad it? Can I put wadding in there? And unfortunately, because this is a foldable bag, You'd never you fold don't want, it. you wouldn't be able no. to fold it. So yes, you could do that if you wanted to, but you wouldn't be able to fold it because it Fair would enough. just be, be, be too bulky. In um, which case you would leave the little flap and the popper off. Yes. Still put the inner pocket yeah. on and just have it as a fixed tote exactly. bag. Exactly. Yeah, uh, which what, would be what, nice. What you could do is you could have them just make the lining, the pocket, yeah. twice so yeah. that you've got that on An the outside rather pocket. than this. You, you will need a little bit more fabric to do that because the pocket does take more fabric than the, the little flap. Yeah. Um, but yes, there's nothing to stop you putting your own design take on it and just making it how you want to. But for the foldable aspect, yes, you do need that. Now, the other thing is you can mix and match. You oh, can yeah. mix and match. Now I've chosen to do, I, I love that. Dad's plaid, I love Dad's it. Dad's plaid. Yep, I put that on the back because I wanted to show you, please, please, please do not be scared about working with checks or oh, working no. with stripes. No. Do not be scared. The only thing that you do need to do when you're working with both of them, either of them, is pay a little bit more attention to the direction. Yeah. So w w with, with the stripes, I made sure that they were all stood up because if you cut them on the angle, mm. it will show. Mm. That's the only thing. So yeah. when you're cutting them, just take a little bit more care. And the same with this, just make sure that your checks are actually horizontal and vertical rather than. Exactly, but the thing is, because these are woven plaids Brilliant. rather than printed, mm -hmm. that weave is straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know we can stretch fabric out of shape, but it will well, come to you woven yeah, straight. Yeah, but no, Whereas not really. Printed, yeah, printed these, plaids can yeah. be all over the place. Yeah, so these ones, well, these ones were phenomenal, but I don't want people thinking, I, I can't do stripes, I can't oh, do. No, no, you no. absolutely can, yeah. just take your time with them. So I think I'm going to change these around. So I'd made it so that I was going to have the whole of it one colour and the whole of it the other. But do you know, I can jolly well change my mind. Of course you can. Christine so. says, Wendy Orlando, your info and demos <laughs> are amazing. Aww. She says, I've just bought half a metre of the Copen and the gold, uh, Stuart, as I thought they'd look amazing with your blue skies and nutmeg Aww. that I got from you at Festival of Quilts. 
Oh, that's that's magical. That is, um, and I'm laying them out. And the only difference that you do need to to pay a little bit of ten attention to is this is the front. So this is the front of the bag. Now, these these are exactly the same size whether they are in the inner or the outer bag. The only difference is that in one this little strip is at the bottom and in the other it's at the top. So just pay attention to okay. your to your your fabric. Got but you. you could make all of these different. Yeah. So it wouldn't matter but yeah, so it would be at the bottom for the inner and then it'll be at the top for the outer. But they're they're exactly the same size. And I wanted to do that because it means that you can actually mix and match. You mm. can do it how you want to do it. Mm. So this is the front and then I know that I've got that. I'm just going to lay that out. And then I'm just, I like that combination of I fabrics. I love that combination. I love that. So then that does mean, because I've cut them out uh, of two fat quarters, that it's going to be the opposite now. So the inner is going to be this the one. Floral, yeah. So that's beautiful, but it's also going to have that. So the inner is going to be a real yeah, mismatch. And really I nice. love that. Yeah, because too. the thing about these, yes, we've got checks, we've got stripes, we've got spots, we've got flowers. Because they're all of the same colour palette, mm. they just work. Yeah. And that's brilliant. You don't really have to think too hard with no, putting these it really, together. really, for me, that's what epitomises country style. Mm -hmm. It is that combination of plaid, stripes, And florals. I don't even have a favourite. They're all oh, really? lovely. They're, I, I do, I, I just love this colour for me at the moment. Yeah. I love this colour. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to put the flap in. So that's what the front's going to look like. So that's what we're going to do now. And it's very, very easily assembly. So once you've cut out all the pieces on the little front flap, I do give you the dimensions. So you need to, to measure the centre and then mark out at certain points and draw mm -hmm. lines. So this becomes your flap. Now okay. what, what you do need to do is you need to have right sides together. I struggled, I'm not going to lie, because mm -hmm. it looks the same on both sides to me. Okay, yeah. So it, 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 uh, to your point, it's, it's that good that you can't tell which. So it kind of doesn't matter, does it? It? You know? it really doesn't matter, it really doesn't. And then what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch down here. I'm not going to trim it at this point because it's easier to put your machine a, a rectangle in your machine than it is to work around these. Oh, but I'm see. going to pretend that these are not there. These little bits aren't here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use that as though that is the edge of my fabric. Oh, I understand. Okay. I understand. It's just a little bit easier to work with. Agreed. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to do two point. I'm going to see what it's going to tell me. It normally says, yeah, it's, it's going to do a two, um, a two millimeter stitch. Now I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to go with that. And then if you do a little reverse stitch at each end, when you turn it through, it's going to, um, it, it won't pull apart. Right. And I'm doing right sides together. I get a quarter of an inch away from the line and I move it around. I'm going to take my pin out because we don't go over pins. And can you hear that clunking? You haven't told me, have you? I don't actually need my dual feed on for this. Oh, so I'm okay. just, <laughs> that's all that noise wouldn't was. I was thinking though, mm, would it? it would absolutely wouldn't no. matter. No. No. What machine is it that you're using there? This one is the NX7. Oh. And I actually I do have this one at home, yes. so um, I feel very at home with this one. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it just takes anything I throw at it, and I throw a lot, believe me. And then when we get to this end, we're going to do a little reverse stitch. And remember, we've put right sides together here. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to trim away a little, I'm going to trim where the line is, but I'm going to come a fraction in from the line, so towards the stitching. What, so a little under the seam, a little normal under. seam allowance, yeah. Um, I have learned in the past, through trial and error, don't go too close, because if you're a little bit, um, heavy handed when you turn it out then um, you might create a hole in the top and I Understood. don't want to right. do that no and I do know because I have done it so we're going to turn this in the other way so this is the point where you don't want to be too heavy handed because we don't want any holes 
Yeah. And just a gentle touch. Just a gentle, yes. Don't go in there with scissors. Oh, no, please don't go in there with scissors. I still do occasionally, Wendy. Mm. I don't know I shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Nearest, do you, you know? know what I tend to use a lot? I'm just Go checking on. to see if I've got it. Is it, a, is it a chopstick? No. Oh, I use chopsticks a I lot. I use a crochet hook. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, because, you crochet. <laughs> because I crochet. But also, if you get a small enough one, um, it's not got a sharp point on. I'm, don't give me anything with a point because I will poke it through. Yeah. Because that's yeah. just me. I, the trouble is... I'm like at the moment cooking dinner or thinking what I'm going to have later. Mm. I'm always, I'm like a snooker player. I'm two or three shots ahead. And, <laughs> and I, so, now, I like that. I, I like that. To. Now, if you want to, you can put a little top stitch around the edge if you want to. Don't okay. have to, yeah. but I'm not going to. Fair enough. Because we're going to do my favourite thing ever. Now, you did get a little sneaky peek earlier, didn't you? When I was, um, when I was, showed you my... Uh, Keeper, my block keeper. Yes. I'm a bit of a um, sucker for for the little. Oh gosh, I don't, have yeah. We, we haven't got them today, have we? Not got We've them got on the today. We've got the cam snaps, yeah. Oh, have you got them oh, on? Yeah. These are. I'm. I'm just gonna choose a blue. These are the most used thing in my room at the moment, and they are brilliant. Now I will put the um, plastic snaps on. Oh, the brilliant! Yeah. Yeah. This is the box of snaps, so you get uh, 15 sets, 12 different colours. Amazing. Hang on a minute, do you get 15 sets in each colour? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you get 15 sets multiplied by 12. No, wait a minute, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, this is, that's around the wrong way. There's 15 colours right. and you get 12 right. sets of each. So it's actually wrong on screen because it says... 15 sets you get you get yeah you get 15 colors 12 sets wow. of each that's that's still a lot yeah it that is, is I mean, it's the same number just just uh, 15 colors rather than 12 colors um absolutely bro now these are t5 t5 so if you have pliers already fair enough um, but if you need some pliers then here are the pliers And there they are. And I, from yeah, I, mean, I, I, um, I forgot mine, so I've got mine at home. But they, they do exactly the same thing. These are absolutely brilliant, the ones mm, you've got mm. there. So what I've done is I've marked, it, it tells me in the instructions where to mark it. Now, normally I would say, oh, it doesn't matter. But I spent so long making sure that there was exactly the space that was needed to make it fold properly. Okay. So I would pay attention to this bit. Okay, fair I, enough. Normally I would just say, yeah, it doesn't because matter. Because you spent such a long time <laughs> doing it. Yes. I think that's fair <laughs> enough. Yes. Um, and then what we're going to do, I'm going to, I've made my little mark there and I'm going to push the point. Now this fabric is, has got a nice weave that you're able to do it with the point of the popper uh, oh, of the, okay. the right. press stud so you can actually do that if right. it wasn't so accommodating what would you use instead to make the hole well i i have um it's it's um can i show it yeah of course <laughs> yeah so i have like it's like a little pokey tool yep. but you have to be really careful this is something that should not be done by children mm. and i always have a block that i put it under so that i don't ruin any of the furniture yep. any of the sides and i know these are self-healing mats but i still would never do oh, it without yeah. anything no i'd make sure but yes you, you can get the little tool to um put it through but make sure that you don't sort of like hold it in the air and try and no, do it sure. because when you're working with sharp objects you don't want to hurt yourself now then what we're going to do this one doesn't matter which is the right way or the wrong way because it's beautiful both sides oh thank you so i'm going to no i am going to have it that side mm -hmm. but then that means that i need the you've got four parts you've got two covers and then you've got the socket and the stud so you need two of the covers, one socket and one stud. And I like to have the socket on the top, but it needs to go there. So that means I have to take this out and then just reinsert it from the back. Okay, because that's the underside. That's, now, yes, that's the way that it needs to be on the bag. And then you pop that on the top and you just push it with your finger, um, but don't, that's all you need to do. Because now what, when you've got, you have got these, yours are blue, but mm. you've got like a little cup 
like a little dish. Now you sit the back in the dish and it sits in there, you can hear it in there, and then make sure that it's straight before you just give it a little squeeze. Just a little squeeze. Just a little squeeze. And then because <clears throat> the stem has nowhere to go but out, it flattens down and that's what creates the Got snap. Got you, that seals it. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we're going to put it all together. Right, we've got this and this and this. And then we're going to put this in here. We're going to sandwich it in between those two so that when we bring it back, it creates this part of the bag. Ah, got you. So it's sandwiched between it's sandwiched the two. sandwiched between, gotcha. yes. Now you want to put this one essentially, and again, I've made sure that the measurements, I'm just going to give that a little press because it's turned up. Um, the measurements that I've done um, allows the flap to manoeuvre when the seams are sewn. Because mm -hmm. there's a real science to designing, isn't it? You know, yes. You just think, oh no, we just put them together, but you have to make sure that it um, it all fits. Yes, absolutely. Right, so I'm going to place that one in, in the centre, and I'm going to sandwich it. Let me just check I've got yeah, the right way. Now, you can pin or clip it, but I've already seen that it is 20 to 12. Is it? Oh, Goodness yes, me. I know. So I'm going to... Doesn't the time fly when you're having fun? <laughs> it does. But please don't do as I do. No, yes, do as I do. Make sure that you, you pin it or clip do it. Do as I say, not yes, as I do. exactly. <laughs> but that, this saves me precious time, this does. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press that out. I can actually just finger press that back. Okay. And then I'm going to sew a line of top stitching because I do love a line of top stitch and I just think it Me makes too. everything look really neat. And because I don't need it to hold it together, I'm going to increase it to three, the stitch length to three. Okay. Um, because it, it's, it's done its job. I've already sewn the seam and this is just to make it look pretty and hold it in place. Mm -hmm. But the longer the stitch, the more freely it's going to go over the fabric. Got you. Right. Yeah, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Oh, it, it looks beautiful. Sharon's got in touch to say, oh. morning, lovelies. Oh. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Just finishing my first big sewing project. Oh. It's Wendy's Bugs in a Bag. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you for the oh. great kit and excellent instructions. Love, Sharon. Oh, that makes me so happy. So happy. I do do a little happy dance around the kitchen. I know people don't believe me, but I do. It's a great joy, isn't it, when anyone yeah. makes something we've designed. It's, it's such an honour. It's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. And it, it's, it just, it does. It makes me do a little happy dance. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the greatest compliment. It's the greatest it thrill. It is. It is the greatest. And this, once you've cut this out, uh, this is a quite a quick make. Oh, for sure. You could get a real production line oh, going, you could. couldn't you? You could. And of course, as well, everyone will want one of these <laughs> and we recommend you have two. Oh, I've got ten. <laughs> Do you ever, ever go out <laughs> shopping and just want milk and come back with 12 things? <laughs> and do you ever yeah. come back and you haven't got milk? Oh, I've done that all the time. <laughs> or... I do. I will. I'll be in my studio working, yep. and I'll think. I t I'll have a little. I'll have a little break. I'll pop out, and I'll get some milk. <laughs> and I go around the supermarket, and I get about twenty things, no milk. Yep. Then get back to my studio and think, I didn't get milk. Exactly. And then so you then can't I have, have a cup of tea. After, <laughs> no. And then I go after work, <laughs> and then I probably forget milk again. Oh yeah. But I do always remember biscuits. Oh, you, you've always got to remember biscuits. Now I'm doing exactly the same as I'm going to do with the top and I'm pressing these back and I'm going to put a top stitch in purely because it looks beautiful. Oh gosh, yeah. It looks, but look at as these As William fabrics. Morris says, do not have anything in your home that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And that's a good rule to live by, isn't it? Uh, Do that yes. top stitching just because it's beautiful. I'm a little bit selfish because I make things I like. <laughs> so, well, that's why you do it, yeah. surely. That's why we all well, do yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I am a bit of a selfish designer. I think, oh, what haven't I got or what do I need? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that. 
we like to fill those gaps. <laughs> Sarah Jane's got in touch to say, hi oh. Stuart, hi Wendy, can't wait to do oh. my first quilt. What's oh. it gonna be, Sarah Jane? Oh. What's it gonna be? I need to know, I need to know. I, you know, the first quilt you ever made, what was the first quilt you ever made? Oh gosh, years and years and years ago mine was. Um, when I say that I, I've only been quilting three years, I've sewn 50 years. Um, so I- You said that really quickly. I did say that very quickly, 50 years. Um, <laughs> So I used to make my dollies lots of things. I made a little quilt. I was so proud of it. Oh, I mean, cute. it was it wasn't very neat, but was it little square? Yes, it was. So <laughs> sweet. Patchwork. So sweet. And they weren't all on point, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't at matter. All. Did it keep your dollies warm? I, I, I. Well, no, I don't. See, the thing is, I would have made so many of them. That's the thing. Yeah. This is what I do. I, I'm. I just once I get something in my a bee in my bonnet, I've just got to make loads of them. Um, so, the other week we went to Nunnington Hall. <laughs> I remembered mm. now it was Nunnington Hall <laughs> in North Yorkshire near Helmsley. And in there, they've got a room which is full of miniature rooms. Oh. So somebody spent a whole lifetime collecting and creating these miniature rooms. And I put a picture on my Facebook and my Instagram pages actually. There was a little tiny bed with a tiny hand pieced hexagon quilt on I the saw bed. That. Did I you saw see that. it? Yes. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. And all of the so and there was like needlepoint rugs yeah. on the floors in all of the rooms and all this stuff. I mean just incredible work. Oh, really worth yeah. the visit. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh Louise says, Hi Stuart and Wendy. Stuart, I was hoping to buy your Bags for Life book today, but it's out of stock. Any chance it will be back soon? Louise in Dublin. Louise, I'm so sorry it is out of stock on Sewing Street's website at the moment, but we will definitely have it in stock again. Um, it's very, very recently, in the last few months, been reprinted, as of all my books, which is, phew, thank you, everybody. Um, wow. So, so yeah, we will have it in stock very soon. Whoa. Right, when you come back to me, I will tell you what I've just done because oh, no, I'm very aware that I have just been um, sewing away. Right, so I've now made, I've made the outer one and I've now made the inner one. And all I did with that, the pocket is made so that you fold it in half and top stitch at the top so that it's lined mm -hmm. um, and it has a nice edge to it. I always do a quarter of an inch down. Anything closer and it tends to flop over. Right, so I yes. like to do a nice quarter of an inch. Mm. But what I have done is I've stitched within the seam allowance with the biggest uh, stitch my machine would allow, so a five, just to tack these together to save me having to worry about the moving. Right, good, So that's yeah. all I've done there. And then I'm going to construct this in exactly the same way. So I'm going to put right sides together with my quarter inch seam. I do love the fact that piecing it in three sections yes. then gives you the lines to fold on. Yeah. It's very It made it easier designed. to fold, made it, yeah, very I mean, cleverly designed. honestly, it looks, now, now that it's made, yeah. it looks one of the most simple things that I've ever created, but it was the one that gave me the most head scratching. Yeah, I Because it, it had to be perfect. But that's the thing, isn't it? When you buy a good pattern, yeah. the head scratching has been Someone done else has done it, haven't you. they? Yeah. Exactly right. Uh, uh, Sarah Jane's got back in touch to say um, her first quilt is going to be the floral delight. <gasps> oh, that makes me so happy. Good choice. Good so choice. So happy. So, so happy. And, you know, just don't be, don't be scared to have a go. And that because you can always unpick it. Of course you can. Not that you not that you're going to, but no. Don't worry. No, definitely be kind to yourself when yes. you're sewing. You don't have to do anything no. that's perfect. You don't. We've been sewing all our lives. Yeah. We don't do perfection, do we? And also remember the machine works for you and not the other way round. Because I think this machine sometimes get a little bit above their stations, don't they, and start <laughs> misbehaving. Just walk away from it if it's not going to... Switch it off, walk away. <laughs> just walk away from it. <laughs> go and have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, yeah. and then go back and just... Um, just ju if, if it does, I mean, I know when you're making things and the machines do, what I always do is completely re-thread it again. If it plays up, it's played yeah. up for a reason. Yeah, so I enough. always, even if the bobbin's gone a bit funny, I will re-thread the whole machine. 
Yeah, sometimes we all need a reset. We do. And for me, that's turning everything off and having <laughs> yes, a cup of tea exactly. or a walk around the garden yes. or a bit of fresh air yes. roll my shoulders. Yes, me too, me too. And sometimes you do just need to rethread your machine as yes. well. Even though it's been working fine all yeah. morning, yeah. sometimes the solution really is to rethread it. Or it's, or it's full of fluff because yeah. you have been working all morning. Yes. Do you have a general rule of how often you clean yours? Well, <laughs> it's funny you uh, oh should dear. say that. Okay. Because <laughs> I actually thought I was going to have to replace my Elmer 680 Plus because I thought the feed dogs had gone because it wasn't feeding. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> After about eight years <laughs> use. And then I thought, well, before I order a brand new sewing machine, I'll just give it a quick clean out anyway. And I'd literally got the most impacted piece of felt that was completely leveling out the feed dogs so they couldn't move at all so i cleaned that out lift literally pulled out chunks <gasps> and then re-threaded my machine and it was like a brand new machine yes. wendy oh yes no i'm 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 with you there i've done but that a new before. needle every eight hours sewing time uh yes you should every eight hours yeah which is and like I'm, once a day for us, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Every day or two, I change the needle. And I buy my needles in boxes of 100. <gasps> Whoa, mm. OK. And, okay. And, and change the needle regularly. Right, OK. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to put the bottom. Now, you could have, I could have done this a bit earlier, but I left it until I've constructed it all. Constructed it all. I'm going to put the bottom one in. Now, don't be scared that this is now going to be a little way up the front because there's only one layer of fabric, so okay. you can ruche it up. Oh, I see. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to pop it through the front. Have and you got I, a mark? I have marked it, yes. In oh, the instructions, well, yeah. it tells you um, exactly where to put oh, it. Oh, cool. Thank and as you. I say, normally I would say oh, be, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit out. With this one, um, you do need to make sure yeah. that it's in the right place. Yeah. So and then I, I gain, and this is going to look really odd because at, at the moment, if you have a look at the front of this bag with the flap down, you can see both the inners of the cup of the snap. Now that is right. That's absolutely correct because mm -hmm. when you fold it and pop it, they will just pop together. So right. don't be alarmed that you've got the same. The set, the, both. both on the inners. Yes. They're different. One's a cover and one's a stud. Yes. That they're both the inner workings. So don't be alarmed. Trust the process. Just yes, yes. And then I'm going to just shimmy it so that it sits in the little cup. Make sure it's in there. Just check it is in there before I do it. Give it a gentle squeeze. And I didn't put the thing on. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I lost it. Oh. I lost. But I hadn't um, done any damage because it fell off. Oh, good. Now the the um, the top one, the socket, does go on quite nicely and stay in place. But the stud, they just misbehave. They do mm, their own thing. Mm. They just misbehave. Give it a gentle squeeze. That's it. Just give it a squeeze. Now that's right. Now it's done. Yes. So what you don't, you, you can either now just construct it together without cutting the corners, mm -hmm. and then you will have just a normal tote bag. Yeah. Or you can do as I've done and I've put the corners in there. Now, what I also like to do, I don't know again about you, sometimes I use the square that I've cut out as the as guide. A piece, yes, yeah. and I mm -hmm. put it somewhere, I don't know where I've put it, so I'll have to cut it out again. But that's okay. I'm going to measure it. And please, please, only through ex experience, make sure that your pocket and your flap is at the top because I've cut it upside down before, which means that it's, you put stuff in your pocket and it just falls out, which is no good. Oh gosh, no, down, no, we don't upside want down to, no. pocket. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Your mento mints going all over the floor. <laughs> oh no, you do not want to do Where that. Where there's originals Exa flying across the oh, carpet. Oh, I love them. I can't eat them. Why? Teeth. Oh. No, chewy toffees, uh-uh. Oh, I no. love no. them. I'm going to cut the first one out. And then I'm going Can't to afford use the dental bills. That's what it is. <laughs> well, yes, you say that. I won't tell you how much um, hubby's just paid for his. Ooh. Yes, but that's fine. <laughs> so once you start getting into the realms of implants, it's mm. yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but where it was in the position in his mouth, yes. he had to have to. Yeah, it. no choice. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, because it just made me laugh every time he smiled. Ooh. But then you end up not smiling, don't you? <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> 
I'm cutting them out, but I say remember to make sure that you've got the pocket and the flap at the top of the bag. Otherwise, it, it'd be upside down. Got you. How are we doing for time? We're doing good. Good, good, good. We have got seven minutes <gasps> on oh, the hour. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness me. That is amazing today. The, time, the morning has absolutely it flown really by. It really has flown. So now we have our back and our front. Now, I learned a little trick the other day that surprised me. trick? Yeah, I did. I did. I, I wasn't really paying attention. You share this trick with us. Well, because I've made so many, I didn't read the instructions because I just know it off by heart. <laughs> so what I say to do with your straps is cut them to size, and that's not definitely not to size. So that's definitely not to size. Let me have a look. Make sure that they are the same size mm -hmm. and that you've got the join in the middle because you want them to be the same size. I yeah. thought I'd cut these, but I failed, didn't I? And you'll see that I have got them longer than I need. So if you are not like me, <laughs> but are a little bit taller, because I am quite mm, short, okay. if you do want them a bit longer, you've got a bit to play with right. there. So if you are because I do don't know do that I'm quite short. do what I've done before now and cut the folded end off. No, please don't. Yes. I've done that with borders, no, Wendy, on quilts. No, you haven't. Oh, my I goodness. Where I folded it in half, measured, and I've cut the fold no. off and ended up with two short pieces. No, no, that's my that's my fear, so I do always check that. So what <laughs> I, I do say now. in the instructions <laughs> is to... You'll see that the, uh, the your, you've got the uh, seam there. So if you put your handle the raw edge of your handle mm -hmm. at the end of that seam mm -hmm. on both sides i'm going to pin this in place so we put the raw end and then we keep it straight we don't twist it and yeah. then we do the other side now what i then say is use this as a guide to put it on your back panel oh okay but i said now you can use your inner lining which is exactly the same as this because it has those three centers mm -hmm. but as long as you put them in different places mm -hmm. when you put them together it works perfect and okay. i didn't realize that i just did it so all i'm doing now is stitching within the quarter inch seam because it means i haven't got to have any pins anymore and the same here And I'd go over more times than I have, three or four times, so that it's nice and oh, solid. Oh, you don't want to be losing the handle. So you sew over the top a few times. A few times. Yeah. Yes. And then, so what I would then say is to take your back, and I haven't decided yet, that's going to be my back. Okay. And then what I would do is I would place that here, and then you can mark exactly where the handles are. But I found that if I did it on this one, but mm. made sure that I put them on the opposite sides, mm. it still worked. Mm. But I'm going to do it the correct way because I, I don't very rarely behave, do I? But I am going to today. So I'm going to mark these in exactly the position, same position, that one and that one. I suppose if you wanted to, you could, could you piece? the outer back of the bag as well i've only i only did that to show you that if you wanted to you could have it in yeah. one piece yeah. but you could do exactly as you yeah. please yeah you could and yeah if you if you've bought your fabric and then find you've got bit le bits left just make a patchwork yeah, one yeah 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 as long as you've got the right the right sizes mm. um i don't know which side i've got to do that one that one uh yeah as long as you've got the right size yeah then you can do it the only thing that i would say you don't want to create too much bulk because it's foldable yeah yeah, yeah. that's, you don't my, want that's too the much only thing yes all the extra yes that's, so that's the that's thing a good point. that's yeah. a good point don't forget if you buy the pattern on its own for 9.99 you could then buy the half meter bundle or the meter bundle of blue skies and nutmeg and then create your own combinations Oh, pattern on its own is just sold out, Wendy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well done, everyone who got that. Well done, everyone who got that. But don't forget the fabric bundles. We've still got some available. I know the charm squares have run out. We've sold out. This is the one meter bundle. One meter of each of all 10 fabrics. 99.99. That is £9.99 a meter. 
per meter. We've also got half meter collections in blue skies. These are all the blues. Half a meter of each. Nope, that's just sold out. Apologies. Nutmeg, I've got five left. So five bundles, half meters, five half meters of the nutmeg. We've got five of these left. Strip roll. The strip roll. So not for this project, but if you wanted to make my garden maze, this would be a good thing to have in your stash. 40 two and a half inch strips cut from selvage to selvage. You get four of each design, 40 in total for £31.99. Wow, that's good. Thank you. That is really good. And then if you want a little coordinating bundle of solids, and you could mix that actually with the fat quarters if you're going for the kit, um, then this would allow you perhaps to make some solid linings or, um, you know, you could add some piecing. Gold, vanilla, copen, cloud and brunette. For sixteen ninety five, Wendy, times beat us. I, I know, but the thing is, I would say with the inside, you don't have to put that pocket, so the lining could just be two solid pieces of fabric. Yeah. You don't have to do that if you don't want Perfect. to. So if we, if we, thank you so okay. much for a whistle stop tour well, of your beautiful if, bag. If anyone wants to see, I have done this several times. So if you look at all of them, you may find that actually you'll see it all pieced together. So. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you ever so You're much. You're very welcome. Will you stay? Yes, I will. For Kate? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're going to go to a little break now. When we come back, uh, I'll still have Wendy with me. I'll have a few specially invited guests <gasps> and the cake. So uh, get the kettle on. Get the kettle on. And I'll see you after this. Hello, I'm Jane Greenoff and I'm stood in the barn here at Pink's Barn in Gloucestershire, England, which is where I live with my husband and I stitch. I, st I think I stitch in my sleep. Um, I've certainly been stitching for over 30 years now and by stitching I'm talking about counted cross stitch or counted embroidery in general terms. I also collect old samplers and I've got one to show you here. Now, if this smashing, it was actually stitched in 1796 by a little girl of eight or nine. And it's absolutely charming. So I collect antiques. I love to draw and create antiques for the future and look forward to seeing you all on Sewing Street sometime in the future. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, 
Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP, even if you check out multiple times in one day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy Alan a present. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP, even if you check out multiple times in one day. Get, and then Charlie's going to run through as well, isn't he? Hello. <laughs> My very special guest. There's one more. Where are you? Come on. <laughs> This sponge, honestly. So this is Michael. Michael's been on floor all day. This is director Charlie at the very end. Pauline Wheeler, Auntie Pauline, you know. Of course, <laughs> fabulous Wendy Orlando. And Ben, who you may have met for the first time this morning. What a gorgeous bunch I get to work with. Um, and just wonderful to spend the day with uh, all of you. It's so weird not having any of your voices in my ear. I feel suddenly <laughs> my voice You're is free. echoing around the room, Wendy. Very it's alone bizarre. All but um, honestly, it's wonderful. And we've got cake, haven't we? Did cake. you put the kettle on? Did you make a cup of tea? Come on. Awkward. So <laughs> should I? Honest? Should I do the honours? I think you should. Are you be mother. Is there a? Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Enough? Is there a child lock on this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, there we go. Wow. Hey, there you go. Look, I can sew a quilt, but I can't use a lighter, which oh. is probably a good thing, isn't it? Congratulations, oh, Stuart. Yes. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Make a wish. I was trying to blow really gently because I've been at enough school and children's <laughs> birthday oh, parties no. where after the candle's been blown out, nobody wants a slice. <laughs> you know? Hachu. Oh gosh. We'll set the alarm off. No, I... There we go. <laughs> right. Let's have cake. Should I give that to you, Ben, to cut up? Yes. 
Imagine that none of us have eaten anything for about a week when you're portioning. No, we up. know that's not true. <laughs> we know that's not true, absolutely. But no, thank you ever so much for all your support and thank you for your support as well. I feel like I'm leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm just <laughs> celebrating You've been two years. In a minute. Oh, no. Oh, I'll it's been amazing. Just take us downstairs. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you ever so much. And look, we've even got, and we've got special napkins too. Thank you so much. No, thank, you. Thank, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. It's been lovely. It's, it's been, been amazing. Wonderful. And I now, will see you soon. Yeah, take care, my darling. Now, Pauline's staying with me for just a couple of minutes because we went out for lunch yesterday and Pauline mentioned to me that she had finished making one of my quilts that she got from You Scrap Sew Blocks Make 100 Quilts. And this has been a labour of love. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, work gets in the way of my stitchery, but it was a labour of yeah. love. It really was a labour of love. And this um, is an absolutely I, incredible quilt. I sort quilt. of, I went a bit rogue. Which we love. And altered it slightly. And that was only due to the fact that when I did the grey, dark grey in between, I realised that I couldn't pattern match. Right. So I decided to make it um into like block yeah. ones instead and here is the quilt if you hold up your side pauline absolutely brilliant thank you so this is a pattern from you scrap sew blocks make 100 quilts called magic beanstalk and in the pattern there isn't this sashing doesn't exist it's all vertical sashing so so pauline's added this vertical sash which i prefer to my pattern i like oh, this bless more you. Um, hasn't she done an amazing job and around each of the leaves pauline's used a decorative feather stitch on her machine to create the effect of jagged leaves yeah i, I just thought it might be a nice idea and i'd never appliqued before um, so that was a journey. Incredible. And I'd never used a stitch like that before. Um, so the whole thing has been a very much a learning curve. But you've enjoyed it. I've so enjoyed it. <laughs> and, Look what and Paul this is... used on the back as well. So she's used like a plushy, like a minky. It's comfy cozy. It is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So no batting inside it. No. Straight on Didn't to. Need to a minky plush backing and I can tell you it is so snuggly. I'm going to say though that the, the binding has been machined. I can't yep. hand sew. I cannot hand sew. So um, I've done what I can. Yep. And do you know what? If there's any faults, which I know, there is, I don't care because it's so lovely. And this is my colours for my lounge. Yeah, for your so lounge. So this is me tucked up for the winter. But this is only maybe third or fourth quilt that you've ever made. Um, it may be. It may be the fifth. The fifth quilt. I think. Absolutely incredible. I've started work. A, a Willy Mo one now. A Willy Mo. We love our Willy Mo. Willy Mo. And um, and I've got Stuart's book of bags. Great bags for life. So bags for life. So I'm going to be. Fabulous. Delving into there as well. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Hasn't she done <laughs> amazingly? It's just incredible. Uh, if you want the book, You Scrap Sew Blocks Make 100 Quilts, it is on screen. It's 17 99 And this is one out of 100 patterns. Oh, yeah. Thank you so it much. It was mm. my pleasure. Really I'm proud of really you. Uh, and thank you for a fabulous design. Oh. You're yeah. welcome. You keep making them, I'll keep designing them. How about that? deal <laughs> <laughs> now you make sure you get some cake I and will. a cuppa yeah. and I'm going to head over to the oh here it comes and then as, as John Nowhere would near the say quilt. thank Nowhere you the um, at one o'clock I'm on cardboard thank you on cardboard <laughs> you're over on Hobby Maker at one, one o'clock one and three with Hunky Dory perfect perfect we'll look forward to watching you thanks everybody thank you so thank much you looks amazing you're welcome Me darling and my I'm going to squeeze go. past you you go <laughs> I'll see you in <laughs> a bit thank you thank you oh my goodness now I want to eat my cake, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it to one side. Oh, Lynn says, Pauline, that quilt is gorgeous. Love the choice of fabrics. It is absolutely stunning, isn't it? Just a brilliant job. Right, let's launch in. So we've done You Scrap Sew Blocks Make 100 Quilts. Actually, I'm just going to grab both books. I'm going to grab both books because Make 100 Quilts does deserve just the quickest of flicks. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. So this is Make 100 Quilts and I'm just going to show you the pattern 
and I think it's 164. Oh no, it's not. Uh, perhaps it's pattern 64. No, it's not that either. Oh my goodness, I don't even know my own books. Uh, Magic Bean Store 138. Just want to show you the pattern. So there is my original version. So you can see there, and I've had the beanstalk growing up, growing down, growing up, growing down. Pauline's all went one way and she also put in sashings going across. That would also make it suitable for quilt as you go. That's one of a hundred scrap quilting projects. Honey bee, stained glass window. There's a gorgeous log cabin with a plique. There's circles, there's stars. There's orange peel, scraps, scraps, scraps. If you've got scrap fabrics that are threatening to overtake your sewing room, why not make a scrap quilt? This is Covent Garden, one of my favorite quilts. Square the circle. Uh, Deputy Joan has made that, yeah. Tanya get, got in touch to say, Pauline's backing idea for a quilt is genius. I would never have thought of it. It's good, isn't it? It's so snuggly and soft. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is one I keep meaning to do on Sewing Street. Colorishes. All those gorgeous pops. Now, they, again, would work beautifully with solids. Oh, I might have to do that. I might have to do or something like that. I might do a little variation. Stars in the cabin. Here we go. So that's Make a Hundred Quilts. That was my first quilting book. I'd written one sewing book before that, so fabulous, but that was my first quilting book. And then the follow-up to that was called Simple Shape Stunning Quilts, which effectively is a hundred more scrap quilts. But what I did this time was divided it up into sections. So you start off as always with my books with all the techniques, the tools and the materials, the basic skills you'll need to make the book work. Then you have the 100 quilt patterns. Now to start with you've got 20 one patch quilts. Next up you've got 20 quilts made with strips and squares. Another 20 made with triangles, another 20 that feature curves and the final 20 which all use foundation paper piecing which I showed you how to do this morning. Um, Joanne says, I have all your books, great ideas. Can I ask how and where do you keep your quilts? Thank you. Well, good question. I, um, I don't keep all my quilts, some of them I gift so I sell, um, and lots I use at home, and I change them around throughout the year. But then I also store lots of quilts at home and in my studio. So I've got some big cabinets, and I have them all folded up usually um, in there. They're in every room. <laughs> I keep them everywhere, but I use them. Um, Joanne, I use them and I love them. So, um, for example, today we've got the pattern for cobblestone cabin, but I haven't got the quilt with me because Charlie's sleeping under it. Um, so, you know. <laughs> so this is simple shapes. All right. I don't suppose there's a fork, is there? A fork. Should we do cobblestone cabin? I can smell this cake and it's cookie dough cake. Look, it looks absolutely gorgeous on a bare plate, obviously. Um, and of course, there's my little bare napkin. Let's at least try the frosting. Mm. Oh, would you just give me a moment? Amuse yourselves. So we'll look at the cobblestone cabin quilt pattern. It's 9 99 and this is your ultimate scrap quilting pattern. As a standalone quilt pattern you will use this so many times. So it's a variation on the log cabin with these pieced cobblestones that run diagonally through the block. Now the real joy comes when you look at all the different ways that you can set those blocks. So you get the pattern to make your blocks 
and then to turn it into a one block cushion, a four block wall hanging or a four block cushion, um, a single bed quilt with a streak of lightning design. Look at all this lot. You've got the pinwheel, you've got fields and furrows, you've got sunshine and shadows, straight set, zigzag, the cabin country star, the um, hidden stars, and this one, which always reminds me of sort of Santorini. Mm. Now you also get all the instructions for making an 18 inch block, but also you get all the instructions for making a nine inch block as well, a nine inch version. So there on the back, you can see there's a pillow and I use the nine inch version of the block. Whereas on the front, that quilt is made using the 18 inch version. So you get both, which gives you double the amount of fun and double the value. Sorry, I just... It is my two year anniversary. What can I say? It's awful, isn't it? Shall we do Galleria next? Let's do gallery. Oh, and it's gone. Now, I just want to grab the gallery quilt, Michael, if you wouldn't mind. It's the pinks and purples with the green border just on the back. There, please, the Tilda quilt. And I will show you this. Um, I have a kit as well, not for the Tilda. That's the one, Michael, yep. And I will show you this quilt. So this is the gallery quilt. Um, again, I designed this really as a quilt that you can use to show off fabrics that you absolutely love. So for me, for this one, this was about showing off these beautiful Tilda fabrics. There's loads of different ways you can use this block. So this is the Galleria. And the idea with, with a Galleria is a sort of a, a parade of shops. Um, some with large windows and some with small windows, but all of them trying to show off their wares to the best of their ability. Uh, so that was the idea behind the quilt. Large windows, small windows, all showing off the fabrics inside them. This is quick and easy to piece. It looks great with any fabric range that you want to use. And it's very, very adaptable. So let me show you. So on the front cover, you've got this version. So this uses the same block, but set almost in a pinwheel. So here's one block, here's another block, and each block is twisted and turned. So you get the pattern for that. You also get the pattern for the 12 block quilt, which I've just shown you. And then here at the back, I wanted to show you how you could use one block to make a cushion, four blocks to make a wall hanging, 12 blocks to make a single bed quilt, and 16 blocks to make a large bed quilt. And again, that looks completely different, all from the same pattern, all from the same pattern. So it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Now, I have a kit, I have a kit. This is a Dan Morris kit. So, featured on the front is that Dan Morris quilt. So you've got these gorgeous kind of amber and rust and golden and turquoise prints that I've married with an aqua solid. So you get the pattern, and then you get all these beautiful fabrics. They look almost batik-like, but they're actually um, digital prints. Aren't they stunning? Aren't they absolutely stunning? So you get some half meters, you also get some fat quarters. 
all these fabrics and then you get a meter of the solid as well you get so many fabrics in this kit for 69.99 um let me just get the last two out some lovely purples aren't these fab so you get all of these and then you also get a meter of the uh, aqua fabric plus your pattern to make that gorgeous quilt and it's an easy one. I actually, I pieced the whole of the top in the afternoon of the coronation. We'd got the coronation on TV and I was going sort of backwards and forwards between the kitchen and the sitting room because Charlie was watching it avidly and I wanted to see all the best bits. So I thought well, I'd do a bit of sewing while I'm doing that. And I made the whole quilt top with the borders in an afternoon. So you can definitely achieve that. Now, just need to let you know, this has been very popular. There are 10 of these kits left. Look, you get all of these fat quarters and you get these half meters. Now there are 11 of these in baskets, but I've only got nine of them. So I don't want you to miss out. Um, grab this while you can. You get your meter of solid as well. That includes your binding. So there's enough there for your binding as well. Free P and P today, but it won't happen automatically. You need to put code Stuart PP23, and that's Stuart S T U A R T PP23. It's spelt with an U, not an U. Yeah. Just remember that. <laughs> and all capitals, no spaces. And that's valid up until midnight tonight. Please don't pay your postage today. Right, let's do instructions. Can we do garden maze? Let's do garden maze next. Now, don't have any kits, but I want to start by showing you a quilt. Okay, so I'm going to come and stand over here in the middle and I want to show you this quilt hanging right here. Now, there's a bit of a story. This is an older range of mine called Kyoto. And I just made this quilt for us. It wasn't ever meant to be a studio sample or a pattern or anything else. I just made it for us and we used it at home. There's some stains on it. Millie likes to curl up on it. There's probably some fur on it somewhere. But we use it and we love it. Um, but I took it to a few shows and I got all day long. I got, oh, is there a pattern? Is there a pattern? Is there a pattern? And I thought, well, OK, if you, I, I can write a pattern. So I wrote a pattern. And the pattern is Garden Maze. It's probably been my most popular pattern I've ever written. Um, it's easy. It, is, it shows off the fabric beautifully. For the vast majority of it, it is jelly roll or strip roll friendly. Plus maybe a few half meters and something for the border. And uh, there's a big quilt there. And let me just show you the pattern so it's very very versatile so on the front i've shown it i've made this so many times this is a four block wall hanging done in tilda i used a green tilda range with a lovely border so you get the pattern for that you can also use it to one block to make a gorgeous cushion there's the kyoto version you get all your full instructions for how to cut it, how to piece it. But look at all the variations. And you get all of your fabric quantities. You've got your cushion, four block wall hanging, 12 block single bed quilt, 20 block double bed quilt, 30 block queen size quilt, and 36 block king size quilt and that kings and all of the settings are different to show you different ways that you can set exactly the same blocks to make all these different ideas and that has been my most popular pattern i've ever written it's 9.99 and for like i say all those strips are jelly roll friendly i do like that because you know it means you can get straight into the piecing so that's the garden maze. Have you got yours? Now, next up, let's do floating stars. So floating stars, I've got a pattern and then I've got two kits. So 
The Floating Stars quilt features these five stars which float on a background of beautiful rainbows. Now, um, the, your star points will be perfect and I guarantee that the method that I teach in the pattern means you are guaranteed to have perfect points on all of your stars which is quite a bold statement but I promise you it's true and then the sachet the setting triangles rather um, you can strip piece them you can use plain patterned fabric or you can use a strip panel as I have now once you get into the instructions you'll see now I used two panels plus some yardage to make this but I've written the instructions so that if you want to use your own fabrics a charm pack some strips some fat quarters even you can so it's a very very versatile pattern now we've got an example on the wall this is the bright rainbow stars with a black background it's been there all day and I have a kit to make that here's the kit here's the brights Here's the brights. So in this kit, it's a really well-priced kit as well. You get your instructions. Oh, I've only got three left. I've only got three left, but look at the price, $44.99. This is about 42 inch square quilt. So you've got your meter of black. That's for the background sashing, the stars and the border. You've got a panel of 45 inch squares. So you get all of these squares and they're all beautiful. These are exactly the same ones. And they're all kind of textured prints. So you get that and you'll use all of them, every last one for your backgrounds, for your stars. And then you also get a strip panel. Now this is the same strip panel that Wendy used earlier on for her project. But um, this time you're going to use this and you're going to cut your sashing triangles so you don't have to piece them. Now if you want to use the pattern again, I give you instructions for using a jelly roll to do that. Or you can use plain pattern fabric for those triangles too. So it's very, very versatile. But you get all of that for $44.99. So that's the Brights version. Really fun, easy quilt as well, that. Now, if you prefer a more pastel, softer version, I've got that too. So this time, uh, we're going to use a nice soft grey for the background so it's a lovely kind of modern palette you've got your soft grey then your squares are all these beautiful soft pastel rainbow shades and again you're going to use every single one of these as peaches golden yellows soft greens and aquas blues sort of light violets and pinks and then you've also got your pastel strips. And again, Wendy used this in her pastel baby quilt. Um, and this is a different way to use it. So you get your strips as well. Again, amazing price, $44.99. Thanks, Michael. Now, at this point, can I just mention, do we have any of the New Mexico patterns left? because I don't want to leave today and leave anybody without the pattern. It's 9 99 You get the instructions to make the quilt, which is 57 inches square, with less than 100 left, 145 in baskets. Remember, this is a great day to buy something that you might normally think, I don't really want to pay 3 95 postage because you can buy just the pattern. It's going to cost you 9 99 and you're going to get your postage for free. So use code STUARTPP23 when you check out and literally you will pay 9 99 for that pattern and you will pay no postage. There are 162 in baskets. 
we don't have any more <laughs> than we had before so do check out your baskets please get that pattern home and do something wonderful with it uh, remember you also get the pattern for the cushion which I have right here there's the cushion and um, we've hung the quilt this away up but you can also it's actually photographed this away up which does does look a little different and that technically that is the right way up that is the right way up however how that's how I designed it however I think I might prefer it that way up actually but I just want to let you know that it's not the same on both direct so just remember that when you're piecing it all to well you'll piece them the same but when you put them together in your quilt keep them all the right way up or don't mix and match because they are square at the end of the day do it you I'll do me you do you make it yours I keep saying this make it yours I like a bit of variety this way and that now next up I'd like to do my strippity doodah bag pattern uh, one of my personal favorites of, of, a, of bag patterns that I've made for from the point of view for me of making it I had so much fun making these but I always enjoy making a bag but I really enjoyed making these two bags so in my strippity doodah it's called strippity doodah because it uses two and a half inch strips throughout for the outer for the handles everything on the outside of the bag is made with two and a half inch strips you use yardage to create a lining for it but you get two different sizes of bag and here they are so you get the full sized deep bag okay and then you get the shorter more kind of day handbag style you also get instructions for using resin handles as I have here or for using fabric handles make make your own fabric handles and you can mix and match so you could put the fabric handles on the shorter bag you could put resin handles on the large now let me just show you on the bag now this is a different version oh we've only got 20 left gosh so on this version I've used a Bonnie and Camille jelly roll and um on this one I've added a button and loop on the outside okay and what you've got here is you use magnetic snaps on the side so if I open both of those you'll be able to see that you've got a big roomy bag there it uses in our form inside to give it lovely structure and you can make either side of the bag look similar the same or really different as I have to give your bag lots of personality so you're going to use those snaps either end it creates a different profile and it also adds a bit of security um, and then this bag doesn't have a snap fastening inside because it has the button and loop on the outside but in the pattern what I've done and I'll show you with the small bag on the small one I've actually put another magnetic fastening inside but rather than put it inside the actual bag I've actually sewn them into these rectangular tabs which sit just inside the, the seam line and the reason for doing that is that when you've got stuff in your bag if you've got lots of stuff in your bag and your bag is quite full it will still have its lovely profile it will still hold its shape it won't it won't squish everything in or sort of stretch out of shape but you've still got the security no one can get their hand in your bag unless they've got very tiny hands like me and there it is oh good question now new mexico how much backing fabric do i need let me tell you so um, if you're using a quilt weight cotton 44 inches wide you are going to need three 
and a half meters of regular width quilt weight cotton and you would do either a vertical or a horizontal seam for that if you're going to use an extra wide backing fabric you will need two meters but it is much wider than you will need but what you could do then with the extra piece because it was much wider is you could make things like some pillows some cushions that go with that actually feature that backing fabric particularly if you went for something like expedition from tim holtz or dictionary which was um our two early birds right that's the strippity doodah bag we've only got 20 minutes what should we do some yarn should we do some yarn let's do the the big bag so i design yarns for stylecraft and I have done for a couple of years. Um, I've got two series uh, with, with Stylecraft. I've got Colours of the World, and I've got a new range of Colours of the World coming out next year. And then I've also got Walking in Nature. And so this was the second part of my Walking in Nature. Now this is a very special bundle here, because what you've got is you've got an exclusive Totes Amaze Balls uh, bag to keep everything in. You've got one ball of each of the brand new colors. And these are called, these have such fanciful names as uh, sachet and strut and swagger. Uh, you've also got a set of five double pointed needles. These are 2.5 millimeters, so perfect for making socks with. And then you've also got an exclusive printed pattern booklet um, that's got things like socks, a shawl, hat, gloves, wrist warmers, um, all sorts of lovely patterns in for $59.99. It's an exclusive bundle uh, for Sewing Street. You can't get this anywhere else. Patricia's got in touch to say, Morning Handsome, managed to get the quilt kit uh, this morning. Can't wait to start. Never been able to get along with that style of quilting before. So here goes, making it for the other half for Christmas. Well, lucky other half. I can't wait to see it. Now, you can also get those Walking in Nature yarns, plus a few others, in duos. Let me show you. So first of all, this ends 8-6, and this is a combination of Swagger and Skip. Swagger and Skip. So these two, I'm just finishing a shawl using these two yarns. Two rows of this, two rows of this, two and two, just back and forth. So I'll post pictures of that really soon, but they knit together absolutely beautifully. Or make yourself two pairs of socks one ball of yarn will make a pair of socks charlie's got size 12 feet and i can make him a pair of socks out of one ball so you you only need one ball per pair and um i tend to use 2.5 to 2.75 mil needles for socks um, next up this ends 5.8 and this is a combination of dilly dally and ramble Dilly, dam, dilly Dally and Ramble. So these are gorgeous kind of primary brights, reds, golden, yellow, orange. There's a bit of green and blue in there as well. A little New Mexico, a little New Mexico. Yeah, I'll take that. They're lovely. Composition wise, 75% uh, pure uh, superwash wool, so you can machine wash your projects and 25% polyamide which is a nylon which gives sock yarn its strength. So that's those. Next up, next up this ends 8-3 and this is a combination of strut and saunter. And when you get these, if you want to see, well, how are they going to knit up? If you turn the ball around, there is a little guide on the side which will show you how that yarn actually knits up. The guide on the side.
If you're a bit funny about wearing wool, give this a go because it's really soft and squishy and lovely. It is really lovely. Right, next up, I've got Stroll and I've got Sachet and this ends seven zero. <laughs> Let me show you how these. So this one, this is uh, Sachet. This knits up as bold stripes, bold uneven stripes. Um, and then Stroll knits up like this. So it's got this almost like pumpkin uh, rust section, green. There's a really bright pink and a lilac. The web, web image is terrible. Let me just show you this look. Would you buy that? Uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's not very exciting. <laughs> and that's what you actually get. Oh, oh, well, the thing, the problem is when you cut, when you crop things, sometimes you get the detail and sometimes you just don't. Anyway, that's what we're here for, isn't it? And then the last pairing is ending two six, yeah. And that's a combination of wonder and hike. Wonder and Hike, it sounds like a folk duo from the 1970s. And now, on the old grey whistle test, we've got another song from Wonder and Hike. They'd both have big beards, wouldn't they? And, and fair isle pullovers. I just wish one of them was me. Waddle and Mints. They're in the next range. No, no, the next range is going to be walking in, um, not walking in nature, it's going to be Colours of the World. Stripe up your life. And it's going to, well, I can't tell you yet, but I will tell you soon. Right, should we do a bit of bag hardware? A bit of bag hardware. Let's do, are these in sets or not? They don't look like, I mean, I'll show you. Do we? I think I can make yeah, sense. They sets, yeah. Oh, they are. These are sets. Oh, no, they're in your groups. Okay. Let's have a look. You tell me. Rainbow. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Right, here we go. Right, that's fine. We'll do that. So this is designed to go with my borrow bag, but it will work with so many bags as well, because you've got two swivel clips, one and a half inch aperture, with what a two one inch D ring, so they correspond, they link together. And then you've got one one and a half inch strap slider. And if I grab my borrow bag and I'll show you how they work in action. So I'll keep those to one side and here's the actual bag. So look, you've got your swivel clips at the end of the shoulder strap and you've got your one inch ring and you've got one of those either side and then on the shoulder strap itself, you've got your strap slider, which means that your shoulder strap can be fully adjustable. And that's all the hardware. But I mean, that's for the borrow bag. But I mean, you could use that combination of hardware on loads and loads of different bags. So that combination is 1066. Wasn't that the 1066? The, the Battle of Hastings, yes. Bayer Tapestry. The Bayer Tapestry. Yes, indeed. Right, that's that bundle. Right, next bundle I have, is that exactly the same but in brass? Bronze, yes, bronze. So we get, there we go. So we get two swivel clips, one and a half inch aperture, the corresponding one inch D rings and a one and a half inch strap slider for eight pounds 36 this time. That is a wild price. That's fab, that's fab, love that. Next up, I've got that same combo in gold. Got it in gold. And this is a gorgeous 
blingy, shiny gold. It's gorgeous. Two of those, two of those, one of those. And two of those, two of those, and one of those. <laughs> Look, the thing is, that is just tormenting me. Everyone else has eaten their cake and gone back for seconds. I have just been looking at it, sniffing it and thinking about what could be. And it's my anniversary. <laughs> right, same combination, this time in silver. This time in silver. Shop ahead with these, you know, stash these. Because the thing is, when we actually need these for a bag, when we've got them on a shirt, we won't have them. They'll have sold out. That's how it works. Well, it's how it works everywhere. You know what it's like when you want to buy, oh, I don't know, H640, we've run out. So when we've got it, you know you'll use this. And it's a great price too, isn't it? 836 for all of that metalware. Now, I've now got some different combos and I'll show you the bag that these are designed to go with. No, I won't. Have we got the rainbow messenger bag, please, Michael? Just one of the rainbow, the silver rainbow messenger bag would be fab. So these work with a messenger style bag, or certainly this is how I've done it. So I'm just gonna grab that one down there. Thanks, Michael. Perfect. Right, so for this style of bag, so a kind of messenger, attache, that kind of bag, you need, this is a fixed strap. So what you're going to have there is, you're going to have rectangular rings at the side. Rectangular rings, so two of those, and then you also need a strap slider. So that's the combination we've got, and that's all the metal wear you need. We'll do rainbow first. So two one and a half inch aperture rectangular rings, one one and a half inch rectangular strap slider. Five pound twenty eight. That's all the metal wear you need for the bag. Five pound twenty eight. And that is in the rainbow. The rainbow is always a little bit more expensive because it's got that very special Aurora Borealis finish, which is lovely. It's like oil on water, isn't it? So that's that one. Next up, I've got antique brass or bronze. So you've got your two rectangular rings and you've got your strap slider, all one and a half inch aperture. So when you're making fabric straps to go through these, you're gonna cut those strips two inches wide and use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you're using webbing, cotton webbing, nylon webbing, then you buy it to the exact size, one and a half inch wide. Four pounds and eight pence. Bargain, absolute bargain. Uh, gold, next got these in all the colours. Gold next. Gorgeous and shiny. Shiny. Lots of you multi-buying these. And last of all, silver. Silver bells. Brr, brr, brr. Ba, ba, ba. Mm, 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 mm. Am I getting away with it? <laughs> Munching away on my cake. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, right, so we've got some, a little bundle of magnetic snaps. So these are useful for things like closing bag flaps, closing the top of bags, or as I did with the strippity doodah, actually 
actually um, closing the sides of the bag. So in this bundle, you get two sets of gold, two sets of silver, and two sets of gunmetal. So that's the outer and the inner, the two washers, that's one set. So six sets in total, very, very good value for 9 95 Can we do these little leather straps now? What's sold out, the black sold out, right. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you that we've only got these three colours left. This is what I mean about stash them while you can, because the navy is about to sell out. You can still get it if you're quick. So we'll start with the navy. We'll start with the navy. So this is the navy magnetic fastening. So two parts, and I'll just show you here how it's used. So there's my bag flap. And what you'll do is, once the flap is made, and I actually wait till I've made the whole bag, is you want to centre that, place it just where you want it. I like to hold it in place with a couple of little wonder clips, or you could use a low-tack masking tape, or even a little bit of glue on the back right in the centre. And then you hand stitch. The holes are already punched, so you're literally passing your needle through the hole, okay? Very easy. Stuart, everyone watching wants you to eat the cake. Don't miss out. Oh, Ruth, you angel. That's so eat good. Cake. Eat the cake. All right, I'm just going to eat the cake. But then the thing is, you know, it'll silence me. Perhaps that's a good thing. Mmm, 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 mmm. Come on. Why don't you come? Have you got a mic on? No, I'll talk down your chest. Oh, talk to my chest. This will be good. You want them? Oh, thank you. Oh, well, we nearly dropped the cake, didn't we? Okay, so how is this going to work if you're Just eating? Hang on, hold that. I'll hold this. I got there it, I got it. Okay, you enjoy, mm -hmm. and I'll talk about this. <laughs> so what you do with this is essentially very similar to the Lisa Lamb style, where you'd saddle stitch. Would it be a saddle mm. stitch? Saddle stitch around. I can't around. talk to me, too. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> darling. Um, <laughs> it's magnetic, which is perfect, but you can also, this is actually a functioning strap. So you can, if you wanted to sew this on and create maybe some little holes and sew that on, Ooh. you could use it as a normal strap perhaps. Nice. So that's for navy. It is $4.99. Real leather, which is incredible for $4.99. That's the navy. Next, Charlie, we'll do, yeah, we'll do the red. Almost a cherry red, I think, like similar to 1970s Doc Martens, but just a little bit brighter, I think. I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wish I was. Don't look, Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at this. Ask John. Don't look at me. Look at this. Ask John. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful red colour. I like also. I, we haven't talked about this before. I like the kind of aged effect of the buckle. I think mm. that's beautiful. Mm. Again, four ninety nine for that. Same process. Magnetic. Here. So don't. Give it to anyone that's got a pacemaker, unless you don't like them very much. I can't say that. I can't. This is why I'm not a presenter. This is what you're, Please why don't you're give it to allowed. anyone with a pacemaker. That's for cherry red. Now we've got the green. I wouldn't call this a chartreuse. I'd call it more of a... Uh, Kelly? Who now? Kelly green. Ooh, Kelly green. Mm. Nice. Very art deco, like an mm. art deco mm. elevator, mm. isn't it? Same process. Magnetic snap. Beautiful. Science. Mm. Science. Have you done? Do you know? Was that okay? I think you deserve a job, Ben. Oh, maybe I'll stop paying. Not on this day. channel. No, no, no. But somewhere. Somewhere. somewhere will Thank you me, so sure. much. Thank you. That was delicious. Ben, everybody. Woo hoo hoo. What a trooper. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Ruth, as well. That was very sweet of you. Just eat the cake, Stuart. Just eat the cake. Right. That's that. We need to do the menu. We need to do the menu. <laughs> it's bank holiday, isn't it, tomorrow? It's bank holiday Monday. And that means one thing and one thing only. It's clearance. Woohoo! It's the bank holiday bonanza. A bank holiday bonanza clearance kicks off at 8 a.m. Uh, at 9 o'clock, it's bolt and quilt clearance. At 10 o'clock, it's the bank holiday bonanza clearance. 
at 11 o'clock it's instructions and panels clearance and then guess what 12 o'clock it's the bank holiday bonanza clearance <laughs> now remember um there is free p and p all day today but you have to use code stuart pp 23 when you check out if you have any problems at all just go to customer services give them a call and they will get it all sorted for you but please don't pay p and p today oh i'm actually caught up on the quilt oh there we go there we go right i could actually stand up couldn't i oh. Wasn't that nicely done? Right, quick push before we go. Uh, this is my brand new quilt. It's New Mexico. It's called New Mexico. Um, this is the quilt that apparently even people that don't like quilts like, which has been rather lovely to hear. I've heard from quite a number of people who said, oh, I don't normally like quilts, but that's really nice. So um, using solids, you might never have used solids before. You might have been looking for the right quilt to use solids. Maybe you've got a lovely collection of batiks or tone on tone prints that you want to use. Um, any of those would look lovely. It's almost like a killeam, isn't it? Or a um, you know, South American woven blanket, but it's all patchwork. Now I'm gonna give you exact numbers. I've got 37 patterns left, that's it. Okay, 153 in baskets. And how many left, Ben? 37. We should do a one minute auction. Get those details on the screen. Oh no, we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna do that. But seriously, very, very low numbers, just 30 odd now left. Um, okay, right. Well, can I say a massive thank you to everybody that's made not only today special, but the last two years really special as well. And mostly to you for being there with me throughout. Um, it's been a fun old day. Thank you for your company. Enjoy the rest of your bank holiday weekend. And I will see you well, in a little over a week. Until then, take care.